Public comment. Order. Order the court. <laughs> public comment for items not on the agenda. Hmm. No public to report. No public to report. Additions, changes to the agenda. Does anybody have anything else? Is that you dinging? That's me. That's you. Off. All right, let's look at, I don't know if Alfred or Toby are coming, but let's look at the truck stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I looked at the ones that Toby just sent recently. Yep. And, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't find yeah, the other ones. I seem to have the first ones he sent, the seven-year oh, seven options, ones. the three seven-year options. I cannot find that stuff to save my life. I know we talked about it, and he's got a spreadsheet. That's what I was looking for is his spreadsheet. I got, I have that. Um, oh, here it is. Seven-year. The seven-year payments are a little less, but they're going to, the interest is going to be more for seven years than it is to pay it off for five years. That's just of common sense. Um, I found what I can find. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then we also need to decide on the, um, what you call it, the warranty, the warranty menu. But the seven year, the five year interest rate from this MLC, which seems to be the best place to go through, they're the ones. They're the ones that do municipal leasing. The five year interest rate from the from MLC is four point zero seven. Five year rate is three point seven nine. So right there, you're saving money because the interest rate is lower. Wait, the seven year is four, and the five year is three. Yeah. Well, four point something and three point something. Yep. Um, and Cliff's got it called up right up there, John. Okay. Um, you pay it off in five years. We plan to either keep the truck seven or five. If we get the extended warranty, then that's for the seven years. My and one of the things Toby was going to find out was whether or not it's transferable. Yeah, and I don't think we ever got to that. Well, that, makes, that would make a big difference. I think he said before. It should be. When yeah, he was here before, value. he said. When he was here before, he said it was transferable. Here's Alfred. Maybe he'll know. Sure. Alfred thought it was. Toby, Toby thought it was, was here. He thought it might be, but he couldn't say absolutely. Right. And so we asked him to verify that. Hey, Alfred. Hi. Hey, Alfred. We're just talking trucks. Okay. Your favorite subject. <laughs> so does my husband. Uh -huh. well, he's not having as many as what the town has. Right. We're looking at the MLC quote, the five-year one, yep. save some interest, pay it off over five years. The question that we still, and I don't think Toby's confirmed it, is the, is the warranty transferable? Do you have a firm answer from Toby on this? Yes. It goes with the serial number of the truck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You mean the maintenance warranty? Yeah, yeah. Right, the one yeah. with Charlie Boy? Absolutely. It goes with the, not who owns that truck, it goes with the, with the vehicle. With the truck. Yeah. So okay. just to be clear, yeah. we own it for five years, we sell it, we put it up for sale, we say this truck's got this many hours, this many miles, it's five years old, this is our price, and it comes complete with two more years left on a warranty that covers the following. Yeah, whatever the warranty covers, yep. it's it's yep. good for the for the bid number of that vehicle. It's good in the year that you or the amount of time that you bought. Yeah. Okay. Good. But so how Toby much does it cost a year? The, the warranty. Yeah. The eighty-four month, the EW four warranty, which is eighty-four months, is a total of four thousand three hundred and fifteen dollars. And the we were looking at the truck coverage TC2, mm -hmm. which is 84 months or 100,000 miles. For seven years, it's 2,620. Whoa, 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 whoa. Does the other one have a mileage limitation on it? 100,000. They're both 100,000? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how many miles we put on in a five-year period. Varies, but 
ten maybe about ten thousand per year. Oh, is that it? The two thousand twelve that we're that we've had such trouble with has only got eighty three thousand miles. Oh, okay. And that's seven years so, old. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the likelihood of us going over that hundred thousand will be slim. Yeah. And then we were I can't okay. remember what we decided when we talked about the towing. <coughs> that was eight hundred dollars, which is seems like <coughs> And that's for 60 months. Yeah, I think dollars for 60 months, just in case, like we've yeah, had with. That's one tow. That's that's one tow is going to cost you at least $800. Oh, okay. But this is, doesn't it, it doesn't seem, it says covering right. $550 per incident. Mm -hmm. Per incident. Right. Right, and you're paying 800 for however many inst instances you've had. Right, and this is for the that's seven, a, that's a real 60 different. months. That warranties are that extended warranties. Well, how much? How long is the warranty under for the truck prior to purchasing the extension? You know, uh, what are we buying actually over and above the existing warranty? Five years. I mean, it's a five-year. And what is a truck warranty. normally factory? Company. Factory warranty is five years. So we're buying two years for another four thousand. Well, but I don't think the factory warranty covers everything, right? Well, isn't it three years, 36000 or something? Uh, it's more than 36000 You're right. It might be three years. Yeah. It'd be good to know all this. It, has a, it factors into what, the, what we're paying per year. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're paying for seven years of warranty, it comes out to like less than $575 a year. If you're paying for two years of warranty at 4000 bucks. Right. You're paying two thousand a year. Mm -hmm. Different set of numbers. I mean, my experience with these warranties, it's it's money well spent with the bigger trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we all know what it costs for cars, but these bigger trucks, you lose a transmission. We just experienced losing a motor. Yeah, that warranty is well well worth the, the, the money. Yeah, I just wanted to get a fix on what it's costing us. It's right. Well, definitely, you have to factor that into the overall cost. For yeah. Sure. I, mean, I just think that you know, for these trucks and the demand that we put on these trucks, it's it's, it's a lot of hard miles. Yeah. It might not be a lot of miles, but it's hard miles. That's whatever right. we drive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're loaded to the gill. We've got the plow. We're pushing snow. We're right. up they and down these hills of Dallas. I mean, it's, these trucks are working very hard. Right. Right. So are we? So we're not ready to make a decision tonight, then? Or are we? What, is there an urgency? I'd like to know. Like, all the particulars. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we wait until we have all the facts and Okay, those. well, let's see if we can, can we come up then with a list of what further questions we have so that we can try to get them all answered. Do you want to know about what I is? I want to know what the, the warranty is that comes with the truck and what it includes. That's what the extended warranty program is, what it includes, and did, what it's did covering. You it it might be one in the, in the flyers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe some of your questions may be it's on. It's in the Google Docs folder, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the previous. Yeah, if you go back to the September 10th meeting, it should be in there. I think Rose is right, it's three, three years. Right, because we looked at the different, we liked the idea of the EW4 for the engine and maybe the TC2 for the truck. Okay, here's Western Star warranty. Yep, that's it. Yep. <clears throat> Which engine are we, oh, there's different warranties. Yeah, we were looking at TC2 for the truck. TC2, EW4. If, if you go down a little further, we were looking at this, wait a minute, go back up. We were looking at this one, see this is for the engine, Yeah. and then for the truck we were looking at this one. What does EW4321 okay. mean? Scroll down. Engine warranty, one, two, three, four. 4 what's the difference? It has to do with different engines. No, no it's different packages. Oh, it's different, different, different packages. packages. Different packages. So the EW4 is more comprehensive. Oh, it is? I thought it was lease. It looks like this one has more. Oh, EW4 is everything above plus? Yeah. Right. 
Okay. Oh, everything in one plus. Right. I see. Okay. And then if you go down, the, if you go down further, then it, we get to most the comprehensive. The, to, this is what we were looking at for the actual truck, not the end. Um, yeah, the truck, which is a different warranty than the engine. Right. I understand. This is the one we were looking at. For that. We don't want the, more, the most comprehensive. It's too expensive. Well, as Toby, when Toby was here, were you here that Monday? I can't remember. September 10th. When Toby was here, he said that, or you said, I can't remember who, that a lot of the stuff that's got the more comprehensive, you never really have any problems with it. Wait, so let me get this straight. So we'd be buying an engine warranty for, say, four grand, mm -hmm. and then a truck warranty for another few Two, grand? 26. Yeah. Wow. But if you average that out over six No, I know, I, know. I thought years, it was so all. Okay. Not that bad. Well, this is more wear, wearing parts, I right. see. I see. Yeah. Right. It'd be more out to cover, like the brakes. Maintenance stuff. Or yeah. brake brackets. Or, right. You know, Not the natural TC2 doesn't stuff. cover anything to do with the brakes. Right. right. You'd have to go to T3. T3 Three covers brake. brake system, wiring. In addition to what 2 has is braking, wiring, and fuel. Right. And I remember when Toby was here, he was recommending Four is everything. Because TC2 is generally what you have the most problems with anything right. with. Well, certainly you can overbuy on these warranties, too. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of what we were looking at. So, um, being that these are complicated computer, you know, managed engine systems, engine control systems, it's a TC3, talks about ignition system, wiring, Does that, is that charging, is that going to cover all the electronic stuff that we have issues with, or are they going to call that something else? They're going to call that ATS emissions under TC4. TC4? Right. Of course they are. Of course they are. And that's, that was a problem on the uh, International, right? The one that's broke down. Yeah. Yeah. But this is no hasn't idea. been this on Western no Star. No, I know. I know. <laughs> Thank goodness, know. right? Yeah. So the Western Star hasn't had those types of problems? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Did you agree on the TC2, or did you have something else in mind? No, I think the TC2 is fine. I think that's, you know, like I said, there is, there is, you can overspend on a, on a warranty. Right, right. And a lot of the stuff that's in the, in the further plan, we don't have problems with. Transmission, clutch, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of problems Breaking, with. Breaking, wiring, fuel, we don't have issues with that. No. Okay. Because that, that would be the additional. Steering, nah, exhaust, nah. So, this confirms right there. Yeah, you guys have a second on the prospect. Don't worry. Well, that's good. Maybe the questions are answered. So, are you. We go back to. Let's just see. Oh, these are five years. The engine warranty is five or 200K for a five year, and the seven years. 250k for the warranty for the engine right. warranty. Five year is engine engine factory warranty, and then you're buying a two year extended on the motor. Well, they're saying okay, so the extended. Why would okay, the extended warranty covers? Oh, I see. The, so the factory goes to 100, and the extended warranty. But that the extended warranty covers everything the factory warranty would have covered, pretty much. The EW4, Probably in terms of the engine. Some. Yes, I believe so. It sort of picks up where the where the factory warranty went. Okay, so the five-year warranty takes us to 200k. Right. And the seven-year gets to 250, so we cover all the mileage. So that's good. Yeah. On the plan. Yeah. So do we still want to wait and get additional information? Yeah, that sounds good. Is everybody all set? All right. So I guess we need, um, 
probably a motion to approve the MLC quote, five year quote. Oh, oh, and there are additions beyond the, the, the stock warranty packages. There are axles, transmission. Right. The transmission is not covered on the extension warranty, extended warranty. <coughs> Do you think we need transmission? That's gonna. That's only gonna carry us to a hundred, then, which should should be enough. So we don't need I it. Wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. worry about that. Yeah. It's an eight double L. Those transmissions are rock solid. We haven't in my twenty years of driving those eight double Ls. We've not had one problem with them. The transmission. What about the clutch? The transmission. Clutch either. We we've adjusted them periodically, but we've never had to replace a clutch. I thought we don't have clutches on these. Every truck has a clutch. Yeah, they're not automatics. I thought these were automatics. No. Oh, I, I just like, I could have sworn our trucks are automatics now. Cabot has automatics, but I, I know because I remember asking. As long as I can help it. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you couldn't <laughs> buy them, but. For yeah, no, you can buy them. You can buy them. A lot of oh, I didn't know that. A lot of okay. Cabots are going to automatics. Right. And then there's a towing thing. Right, which we talked towing about. package, right? $800 a year. Right. No, eight hundred dollars for sixty months. Unlimited miles. So I thought I don't know. It seems to me that towing makes sense given our that current pretty cheap. current current experience. Let me see here. dollars a month for towing. I think we get the towing package. Yeah, the recommendation from uh, Toby and Alfie was for the EW4, this TC2, and, and the, the tow. tow package. Yeah. Okay. So I was just in the process of trying to summarize what maybe we decided. I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. The MLC quote for five years, the um, warranty package, the EW4, the TC2. Hey, 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 this is Alphabet Super for me. <laughs> oh, okay. ED, what was it? Here. EW4. EW4, EW4 warrant, engine warranty. Engine warranty. Okay. The TC2 truck coverage. The TC2 truck coverage. Ooh. And the towing. And Madam Treasurer, do you have any questions about this? No, I think that's a good motion. Okay, so I guess I'm making the motion. Would somebody like to second it? I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? All right, John, any more questions no. or thoughts? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And up on the board, is that municipal leasing consultants? Thank you. Oh, that's what that's good work on you. Yeah. 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 Good, yes, oh, good, good, good investigative work. And thank you. Yeah. More municipal oh, leasing. Yeah, they're that's right. Been work enough. It has. It's been a tough summer, summer for. Our and where? What's the status of our jump truck? The. It's the 2012 on the road. It's working right now. Oh really? Yeah. What was the problem? That they kept. Um, it's an international. <laughs> no, 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 but they no, kept running the battery down or something. Well, that was one issue, and I don't think they really discovered that's really, I mean, it's keyword, it's not bothering now, but I didn't really get a good description as to what the problem was with that. But we're still kind of... Other than the truck was had set for five months uh, down there, so maybe the batteries, you know, went dead and then froze, or uh, so we put three new batteries in it, uh, and then there was... Uh, wet, uh, Navistar was telling them that there was a wiring uh, to do with the battery cables, mm -hmm. so they had to add a couple more ground grounds, grounds to it, and that may have cured it. Yeah. but I, I, I'm not really and convinced. Throwing that parts out until it yeah, works. Right, right. Okay. Right. And we're still trading it. Uh, or we're sell selling it. Selling it. We're okay. Sell it outright. And as so far as I know that as long as we can, as long as we can get rid of it by four January, we'll get what they're. They told us the forty-five thousand. So how do you how do you advertise that? It's well, it's it's through JMB. JMB yeah. has a wholesaler that they use 
they buy, this wholesaler buys all of his trucks, his used trucks. Oh, okay. And as it stands right now, he's still interested in this truck. Mm -hmm. As long as we can get rid of it before January. Yeah. Okay. Because then it's, a, it's, a, it's another year older. Right. And it's, right. you know, it's not worth as much. Right. right. Okay. So. And how much? Uh, 45000 was the last quote that we, that we got. And which truck was that? That's a 2012. Okay. The 2012 Lemon International. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to know, big lemon right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ask Alfred what he thinks about international trucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and really, in all, all honesty, most of those trucks, the older trucks, were really good. I, I own one myself. It's an older one. I love it. Yeah. Older than that. The old. Yeah. 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 But it's just when they, when the emissions came. They tried to go without the this urea, which is a liquid afterburner. Death stuff. Um, they tried to build the truck to run without it, and that's where they went wrong. If yeah. they had just went through, jumped on the board with the rest of them, and put the urea yeah. to them, yeah, that would have been a decent motor. Huh. But they just didn't get it right, and, and they're not. paying for it. Yeah. And so Big time. As I'm saying, a lot of other people are paying yeah. for it. Their mistake yeah. too. But. You know, I, I'm not all against international. Mm -hmm. Just that this between just that 2000, 2007 and 2014, I think, is when those when yeah. that, that motor was built. And it was just bad. So while I have you here, I mean, I'll be sending out an email, laying this all out to you and Toby, and hopefully to the rest of the committees. I'm going to mention it to the full board tonight when I do my chair update. Um, hopefully looking to get a preliminary highway budget by October 22nd prior to, to that so we can have just preliminary discussion this is not the final so this is like this is what get, we have budgeted getting the jump on it getting the, right because yeah. we don't want to be like we were last year at the last minute with all this stuff yeah. making my hair grayer yeah. by Makes what sense. date October 22nd so that's just a heads up so you have an idea yeah. And then I'll be coming up with a more refined schedule as we go along, but as long as you're here. Sure. Um, anything else tonight for us? I have a couple items. Um, I was walking, went for a walk, and I found a couple tires over the bank between Gale Graham's house. Oh, okay. and I see those over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. That's that beautiful display you see. Yeah. Um, so I put them did there. a really nice job decorating them. Yeah, decorating the <laughs> beer bottles. And, yeah. Um, and then there's still that the issue remains with that tree maybe on uh, this pond road that's oh yeah that really worries me because there's so much weight over here that if we get a really wet spring and the soils get really soft that that tree is not going to be able to there's not enough root structure here right back next to the pond and right so, so maybe a tree warden should go out and eyeball it yeah. and confirm that's, a, that's definitely a process a tree warden process tree yeah. warden. where if that thing falls on somebody they're dead 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 it's it's this big so will you contact neil yeah you're okay contacting yeah. neil oh okay. yeah yeah was that a basswood or a it's ash? bass i want to say it's bass yeah it's a heavy yeah. wet tree oh. man. yeah I don't know my yeah, and the neighbors right there are anxious to see it go too. So oh, they are. Oh, good. I believe so. Well, Ian, anyways. Okay. Ian's the son. And, I, and they're, they're directly across the road from it. Yeah, the voyeurs. It's pretty oh, scary. Yeah. Would that fall on our house if it? Would it reach on? Um, that's debatable. Yeah, I'd have to look at it again. But it yeah. is. It's leaning that way, certainly. But was still, that always like that? Yeah. But it yeah. Was. All right, so the resolution is that Alfred's going to contact Neil and the tree yeah. warden will make a decision. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. That's it? Anything else? You have anything else? Uh, I got one question. Okay. Um, and it's fairly simple. Uh, you guys just got me a cell phone. Mm hmm. Right? So I'm wondering what my limitations are to that. I mean, can I use it as my personal phone? Is it strictly town business? I mean, we're... I don't know that we have a cell phone policy, but I would think generally it should be town town business related unless it's like an emergency or something. Okay. Well, I just want to know before I get myself in trouble. Right. No, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. It's a good thing you asked. I mean, otherwise, I'm carrying two phones. Your There's personal no phone around. and... I, yeah, I'm going to have to carry two phones right. if... if if I need to separate. Is there, well, I'll ask Barbara. I'm assuming Barbara's got your 
number in the office. and has added right. it to the contact list. And Julie's actually used it. She texted me. I, I know. <laughs> Is that the day from the incident? It's a little incident, yeah. On the county road? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, does that answer your question? Um, so, I should limit it to town use? Yeah, I mean, I'll be pretty much, I would think, unless, like I said, there's some kind of an emergency and you need to call home. I mean, there's, we're not going to. I don't know what the plan limits are, you know, the, the plan limits are as far as minutes and texting and... Is it AT&T? Well, I don't know if it's AT&T, I don't know if there, don't know. there are unlimited, unlimited texting, AT&T. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to cost the town money. It, I mean, you pay a certain amount right. a month, yeah. no matter right. what. Calls usually on the yeah. but, you know, I just don't want to be calling somebody in my general contracting world. Right, that would not be, then, probably be good. And then... Yeah. Uh, somebody get wind of it and I'm in trouble. Right, no, I yeah. think you make a good point. I, I think just, that it, anything... You should keep it separate. so I need to know. I mean, if you, you need to call Marika from the town phone, obviously, yes. Or, you know, your brother or, you know, whatever. But I think you should segregate your town calls from your private business calls on a different phone. That would be my recommendation to keep it clean that way. Yep. Does everybody agree? Yeah, I would agree. I, I don't think there's like a huge objection of you using the phone, but it is in the best interest of the community that there's no perception of an impropriety or something right, like that. Right, an overlap of yeah. stuff. I mean, you can see that. Well, like I said, I'm going to have to carry two phones, so you guys can see that. Right. Yep. Right, I mean, that's, yep. that's not an easy thing to do. You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> try to keep track of two phones. I've actually had to do that. <laughs> I know yeah. it's a it's a pain, but yeah. it was. I think it it's in everybody's reasons. best interest to keep the bus your it's what separate all the state business. What employees do now, right? Aside from town stuff, or you know, just calling home, or what do we need for groceries? That's not. I don't have to see that as a big deal, but your other personal business, I would think people might have a problem with that. Okay. Um, and now I was going to ask you something else, and now I don't remember what it was. About street signs? Oh, oh Lightning Lightning Ridge it's and Adam Adam Man are now missing. Street signs? Yeah, they're both oh, gone. Oh, yeah, Lightning Ridge. Lightning Ridge. And and Adam I, took, I took them. You took them. <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty. Oh. <laughs> no, I took it so I could get it correctly spelled, because that seems to be a large issue. Well, Alfred, when you take my English. signs, you should call me. <laughs> I was told that it would be better if it was not there at all rather than it being misspelled. Yeah, That's Greg and I chuckle. He said, you go tell Alfred, Alfred, get two big of concrete blocks and write Adamant Road on one side and Lightning Ridge <laughs> on the other and just draw arrows. He right. said, I bet no one will steal them. Some, have some Jersey, some Jersey. Yeah, the barrier. Jersey barrier right. thing. Right. And I said, but Greg, they gotta be, you know, legal and reflective. I'll give him reflective. Uh, right, right. So the so, sign has is, is been corrected and it's in the back of my truck. Okay. Oh, I thought, well, I'm glad to know you took them. We'll get on. to that tomorrow. All right, great, thanks. Um, anything else for Alfred, folks? No. Anything else for us? All right, thank you. We're good, okay, very good. Winter's coming. It is, fast approaching. Yes. Yeah. Are we planning on doing a meeting at the garage the first Monday? Oh, right, first Monday. Um, Cliff and I will come to the garage around 9 to meet with you and the guys. Okay. If that works for you Does guys. Does that work for you guys? I just, before, the weather hits just to keep to our yeah open, that's you know. the first of october first right monday in october right yeah. right it's actually next week yeah so that's fast approaching too yes it is <laughs> um yeah that's fine okay nine o'clock works good we would like six but i know you guys um, that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> See you after. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks thank you all right um the only other thing i wanted to do before we delve into audit and we have one minute to do this, or two minutes I need. Um, as you know, Maria Melikos resigned as town health officer. I am town health officer every time there's no town health officer. 
So Jeez. Judy and I have both talked to Jay Copping, and he's willing to be the town health officer. Wow. So if I could get him appointed tonight, that would make me really happy. I don't have to be health officer anymore. Do you folks here all know who Jay Copping is? I know him very well. Yes, we yeah. know him very well. I told him he didn't really need so to come. So on Jay's. Jay's a Jay, EMT. He's, he's, yeah. a, he's still with the fire department. He's a nurse. I think he's still with the fire department. He's a nurse over at um, the Plainfield, Plainfield Health, Health Center. Center. Yeah, I've seen him there yeah. several yeah. times. Yeah. He was at CVH in the Oh, he worked uh, in the EMT room yeah, for, for a quite long, a while. long time. But he's been on the fire department for a really long time. Yeah. Where, what road does he Pretty live on? Pretty competent. Good. Good um, guy, he is. He's really, we're really lucky that he agrees. It's over, I think, kind of near Scott and... Um, Off Singleton Road somewhere? No. In that area? Um, I know he's showed up at my house really fast before. Yeah, he's over that end of town. He's in okay. East Callis. I can't remember the name of his road. Got on the east side of 14? I just... Um, I know he has horses. Yeah. No, we're, I mean, we're yeah. really, I feel really lucky yeah. that we've got somebody with this much experience. Well, like Max Craig Road, you said, right? No. No? No. no. Um, no cl much closer to East Callis. Yep. Yeah. I'll gladly make a motion to appoint Jay Copping as the town health officer. Okay. okay. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, I will contact Jay because he has to come in and sign a form mm -hmm. to make him official. Yep. So, and Maddie also resigned. From the conservation commission. She did. Oh, yeah. did she? oh no. I she hasn't been on that long. Yeah, I guess she's you know so financially she's compost, had to right? maintain four jobs, so four she's things. like burned out. Right. Mm -hmm. I know the conservation commission is constantly looking for yeah. members. Okay, my next thing is um, the quarters up to reauthorize my role and um, compensation. So I think from the office's perspective, my role is helpful. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, I would like to suggest that maybe we do it for six months instead of every three months, because then I forget that it needs to be re-upped. Um, Should we get a warranty with that? Or? Yeah, extended warranty. <laughs> extended warranty. And it's been difficult to do the $500 after taxes. So I would suggest that we do like 525, 530, I don't know what it really comes out to before taxes, so Sandra doesn't have to muck around in the system and try to get things to come out exactly 500 because it just doesn't work. So since this is about me, I will not participate in the motion or Too late, you already did. <laughs> what a sell job. Did I you know. get that on film there? <laughs> He's got it on film and Judy's got it yeah, there. She should be like marketing sneakers. Or no, I have it blank by who the motion not is made by. <laughs> I'll gladly I like make Nikes a motion yep, to um, reappoint Denise as our administrative Whatever. liaison with the town um, office people. Um, with a compensation at five hundred and fifty dollars a month before taxes. Well, five fifty and then taxes taken right, out. Right. Yeah, five fifty before taxes, um, and for a term for six months. I'll second that. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on that, Cliff? No, I totally agree. No, but we really appreciate what you do, and I don't. this this. Speak you know, for yourself. <laughs> well. When in your app, <laughs> I do appreciate it. Okay, well, Given the alternative, no, good, just kidding. Good. I do. Can we add that to the motion. Yes. <laughs> I don't think you voted yet. No, they didn't no. vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for your vote of confidence. And I have to tell you that Cliff has been really taking the lead on a lot of this technology stuff. I don't know what we would do without Cliff's piece of that. We meet with the town office staff. I just want you to really, Cliff's done an amazing job. Thank you. Make it, job let here. the right. duly noted you know in the minutes that Glad to Cliff's help out. Great. So, and we have another little project that he's working on that we'll probably bring up next select board meeting. So all that said, I guess we're on to, yes, the treasurer and the clerk. Do you have anything that doesn't relate to audit that you want to bring up? Just that voting has begun for November 6th. The election is already underway. Yes, we got our absentees automatically in the mail. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Treasurer? 
Anything other than talk about audits? Everybody's most exciting <laughs> topic. No. I okay. So I just I do want to put out there that Sandra, we hired her as treasurer and delinquent tax collector at 32 hours a week. She has been working routinely 40 to 50 hours a week. Hopefully some of it will settle down now that the audits are done. But I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as we're budgeting. Um, because we want to keep really good help, and she is. Then we need to make sure that we're paying her appropriately for the time that she puts in. Mm -hmm. Is the NEMRIC system all up and good? And Except for now the computer had a meltdown. I wasn't going to bring that up tonight, but the NEMRIC is all but installed and programmed in. It's about 95% complete. We're waiting on opening balances, which once our audit is accepted, um, we will have opening balances. That would be opening balances for FY19. And at that point, um, highway surplus will need to be booked over, and it, we will be installed. And, and the numbers will be entirely flushed out. Right. And if worse comes to worse, we may have to buy Sandra a new computer. While we're waiting for, to find out from RB Tech Holland if this is going to work. They had to take and wipe everything off, go back to the factory settings. She lost all of her contact information, everything. So that's where we are. At just very all right. So very quick very update quickly. on this. So let me be clear. It's, um, so that those computers are, haven't been backed up. We don't back up our hard. No, drives. that wasn't it. My computer was crashing uh, basically every 20 minutes within the Nimric modules. We thought there was an antivirus Nimric operating system clash. So uh, antiviruses, uh, okay. the antivirus was removed from my computer, but crashes continued to happen. Very much affected the ability to work. Yeah. And um, we continued to have this antivirus conversation, and uh, we decided that what if it's really my computer? What if it's a hard drive? Right. And I worked one weekend exclusively on Barbara's computer, and I had no crashes whatsoever. Yeah. So my computer has been wiped. I've lost my. But they couldn't. They couldn't recover the hard drive. It, it's been um, taken back to its factory setting, so everything is there. They've reinstalled all of the programs. But they were able to save the information on the hard drive. That my contacts couldn't be saved. So she lost so a bunch of stuff. I, so on my email, when I start to type an email address, it doesn't pre-populate. Oh, okay. Those are gone. Yeah. So yeah, that's okay. not a big deal. All yeah. the passwords are gone. Yeah. We need to, and I need to install some more passwords. That's all fine. The only issue we have that oh, that okay. has any interest to the board whatsoever at this point in time is QuickBooks, which holds all of our financial data from FY18 back, was migrated from a regular QuickBooks program to an enterprise program when we hired Nicole. She gave us one of her licenses. Right. Um, we don't have that license. We did not have that license key. We had to buy a new QuickBooks program, which we did over on Friday. A mess. Colin informed me today that our data will not migrate to the new QuickBooks program because if it's in enterprise, the file format is different and it won't go over. So for the time being, we're going to have to see if Nicole Sansibrion will come back and reinstall her I enterprise. Just, but I thought we just bought that. We can't buy it. It's professional. So... So we're gonna. I'm gonna have to see if she'll come back and reinstall it. And if not, there are programs or applications that can convert data from an enterprise system into the QuickBooks program that right. we have. So, so as far as far as historical data, happily, we are um, done with the audit of FY18. Mm -hmm. 
I can uh, recover the budget numbers from, uh, you know, we'll be able to go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicole is a very busy woman and yeah. oftentimes, you know, difficult to nail down to an appointment. So what happened with the version that we bought? The version that we bought is installed and it cannot accept the data that was, that was in the version that we had. So, um, do we know what one of these converter tools would cost? Two hundred and twenty-five dollars. I'm thinking, just go there. It, it, I, 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 I mean, it's a lot less labor. Well, yeah. If that's sure. an easy fix, why not just do that? Yeah. And then you're not beholden waiting for Nicole's availability yeah, and whatnot. Right. I, I, does that I does that, think does that, that makes sense to you? Do you still need to use QuickBooks? Yes, all of our historical data is in uh, QuickBooks. Do you still need to use it? Why can't you just well, enter, so, store it on a flash drive and call it a day? Well, I have it on a flash drive, but I don't have any place to read it. We can read it. Do any you have books? Enterprise? Yeah, we can read any QuickBooks. Any, any Quick, where? If you talk to Lori at our office, she's a QuickBooks advisor. I suspect she would be able to read anything you have. So we may not have to worry about it, is what you're saying? Well, talk to her first. Talk I am concerned. I'm wondering if I backed up after the last journal entries that um, Jordan had me put in. That's the only thing. Well, but if you have it backed up, we can tell. Okay. So. That might save you a lot of. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering. All right, we yeah. can try that. I mean, if you have it in hard copy, it's historical. Yeah. Frankly, sometimes paper might be better than because you're not going to renew that license year after year to have somebody read it ten years right. from now. Right. Right. Good point. Right. You yeah. just want it somewhere. And so. if somebody else can print all that stuff out for you, send it to Capital Copy or something. Is that a five years worth or? Well, oh, it's not that big, no. Yeah. No. But you, you, in other words... A couple hundred pages, probably. If right. you wanted to see a particular line item and what was in it, for instance, who we bought gravel from, what the check numbers were, mm -hmm. the dates, and the amount of each individual check number, um, that, that would be, what would it be in a detailed transaction? We, we have that. You actually sent that to us. We have that as well. Huh. So, See, you're better off than so you thought. I'll, I'll be in touch with your okay. office, Lori. Lori. Yeah. Because Jordan wouldn't have probably done your financials without making sure that the QuickBooks agreed with what we have. So I suspect that we do have an updated version. Okay. That would you be can't good. convert that to PDF or something? You can. Sure. Maybe we should just convert you can, it. You can print it either. You know, you can convert it to anything. But yeah, you can lock it in as a PDF and then print and it. We have the PDF. You guys have the... QuickBooks version if we ever need to delve further. Right. And that's okay from an auditing standpoint? That that's PDF. I'm not your arch archivist, but I suspect that PDF. anything that you have, that's even okay. in paper, is probably okay. Okay. You know, it's just a summary of bills by mm -hmm. line item. It's right. not oh. very complicated. Yeah. Okay, so maybe easier fix than we think. That would be nice. All huh? right, that's acceptable. Yeah, but talk to Laurie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Is that it? That is my only tale of well with no <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a really well functioning, I'm sure you saw, really well functioning staff between Judy and Barbara and Sandra. They get along very well. They work well together. They help each other out. So it's it's I I'm really happy with what we have. Nice. I'm gonna send around as we always do the warrant for your review. Mm -hmm. I have reviewed all of them prior. They look good. Everything looks great. I didn't even have any questions this time. Well, I did. Eleven dollars and thirty-eight cents. That was it. Okay. Which she answered. It makes sense. So, so thank you for coming. Let's welcome. introduce ourselves. You know, Sandra. Yep. John. Hi. Hey. Denise. Yep. Cliff. Hi, Cliff. I'm Rose. Yeah. Hi, Judy. Yes, we have Judy. And then yeah. this is our filmer from Orca, Jerome. Hi. And that's Rod Buck. He's the chair of the Trustees of Public Funds. Great. And I know we had, I saw something in all of this stuff that I don't really understand about. Recommendation and management letter. Yeah, in the, about the trustees stuff. So what is, I'm not exactly sure. Start? Well, that's my question is sure. what's the best way to start? FY17 is really, you said. It's history. It's history. We don't even I'm really happy need to, to talk about it if you want to, but it's ancient history at this point. So right, and it's nothing, there was nothing 
I didn't see it. Just anything. roll forward into 18, and 18 is where you are, and right. And that's three months history now. So you're really starting to think about right. 19, I think 20, right? I mean, honestly. Right. I mean, that's 18, what we're going to. Yeah. Right. Because we're going to start. We're going to start budgeting. I heard that. Yeah. 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 So. So we want to understand this. I have some questions, yep. as you can see, my little orange thing. Yep. So I mean, I'm I'm here at your pleasure. I can give you a quick overview of the process, the results. I think that's probably a good place to start. And then see if there's any questions and. Mm -hmm. Can you call, can you call the doctor? Mm -hmm. Are you going to start with the FY18 audit or are you going to Correct, start? the FY18 okay. audit. Because that's, so in, a, in, a, in an audit, that is our main product, is right. the financial statement. The, any recommendations you get are simply a byproduct of our work that we need to do to do the financials. It's not an internal control review. Mm -hmm. We're not here to find things or to look for things even. We're here to tell you that your financial statements are fairly presented. However, when we do that, mm -hmm. we ask a ton of questions. Right, yeah. And we dig around quite a bit. And so as a result of that, we share what are called material weaknesses in internal control. And that's in the Sign management letter, right? That's also in the audit. Significant right, yeah. deficiencies in internal control are also in the audit. Yeah. And then <coughs> what's <coughs> also in the management letter are just things as other recommendations. And those aren't necessarily, they're simply things we want you to think about in terms of helping you to run the town okay. more efficiently, more effectively. Well, I know Rod and is getting ready to go out of town, so he had a timing things. I don't know if there's a way to kind of do this overview and then maybe answer the question about sure. that piece, and then Rod, you're welcome to stay or you can leave, because I know you said you had packing and things. Can you can join us at this table, too. Yeah, right? bring a chair up. Right here is a chair. Here. Sit way over there. So, let me start with the overview. Okay. So what? These are your financial statements. The only thing in here that's mine is the letter. The letter in the front and the letter in the back. Yep. Everything else is yours. Right, uh, these are all printouts from our system. They are basically yep. printouts from your system. When we're done, your record should agree with these exactly. The footnotes are the explanations of what you do. Mm -hmm. When you're done, we ask your treasurer to sign a letter saying she takes complete responsibility and agrees with everything in here. That's true of every audit. Um, and she did. And so we make sure that she gets a chance to look it all over, ask any mm -hmm. questions. The idea being that there shouldn't be anything in here that she's unfamiliar with either because the numbers or, or the, the items in the footnotes. Okay. So what an audit is comprised of is our report on the financial statements, and that takes place on page one, two, and three. So you've chosen for FY17 to convert from full accrual basis to modified cash basis. Right. We've seen a number of towns convert from full accrual to cash, primarily because the complexities of conforming with GAAP for towns has become so onerous that when, when we're done, nobody can understand the reports that I give out. And that's not beneficial to anyone because this should be a tool for you to use. The other thing we do is we take the records that you use all year for comparing budget, looking at budget status, seeing where you stand, and we take them and convert them to accrual. So we have payables and deferrals, and we have to put your share of the state pension in, and we have to do all these kinds of things that don't make sense for a small town. So based on all those discussions, you've elected to go to modified cash, and we, right. we, we agree that, that it makes sense for you. Better, yeah. I think so, because it, it's understandable. And as I started this conversation, you need to be able to take responsibility for the financial statements. And if I have to come and include all of these adjustments that I make that you'd have to go to school every year to understand them, then there's a problem with independence. I'm not your auditor anymore, I'm your accountant. Right. I can't audit my own work. And so it really becomes important that your treasurer understands you know, how these books, and when it's modified cash basis, that's doable. Yeah, and it's nice that the standard has a good understanding of that. Yes, yes. And, and we've done this in a lot of places, and it's fine in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, there are no requirements that you be accrual basis. Uh, it's acceptable by the feds if you have federal funds. Uh, the state accepts it. There's no, so it is an option for municipalities. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's why you applied this to investments, and because of the change to modified cash basis accounting, you're suggesting we use historical cost? Correct. Um, Not in your own books necessarily, but it, but in order to, I, I'm, I'm suggest. Well, I'm going to roll back a little. If you use market value for investments in the material, and, and in your case, they are material. They're they're significant amounts of investments. 
and when you're using cash basis, cash, it, it's, it's money invested, money in and out. And so when you first bought these investments, you converted cash to an investment at some point, wherever the, whenever that happened. At that point, the difference between your cash and well, investments... Well, we converted from existing investments, which were bank CDs, to, but, but eventually, to mutual funds. Right, but eventually, some, at some point, some time, cash became CDs. CDs don't start out CDs. You have to you have right, to make a that conscious. Could have been decades ago. Absolutely, that's the problem. Right. So decades ago, somebody turned so that's cash what you into CDs. To research? Yes. That's no, right. no, no. I don't care if you're researching, oh. frankly. Okay. But if you don't want a qualified opinion related to having your investments at market value, then you'd you'd want to research it, or or you sell and rebuy. Sell and rebuy, though, doesn't tell you what happened. It doesn't matter then. Cost. You turned it to cash and then turned it back to an investment. So you mean you have to do it, sell and rebuy, after we make the switch to this... this and uh, any time you want to do it. Modify cash, right? Sure. Any time you do it, we'll reset the original basis. And because you're not a taxable entity, there's no tax involved. If, if I were to do that with my own personal investments, I'd be worried about paying tax on my right. capital right. gains. Of course. As a town, you don't need to do that. The only thing you have to worry about, perhaps, are any brokerage fees that might be involved, yeah, if which, any. Which we don't have. We just have to worry about short-term trading rules with the funds that we're invested in. Correct. Can, right, Sandra and I can handle this. Don't okay. you? Is that a big deal, Robert? No, no not, not given the way it was right. stated. Okay. It's just an annoyance. Yeah. Correct, but it but it will have to be done once. Right, right, and yeah. then you're done. But don't you? Wouldn't we have to track dividend reinvestments and everything else going forward? Mm -hmm. Which but is also a huge. Pain. We already do that. You already do that. You know what you you know every year from here on forward. We know what you've earned in investment income, and we know whether you've withdrawn it or reinvested it. So your books and records would show that. So you're going to do that, not us. No, you're going to do that. These are your records. And yeah. they're going to audit but, our records. Right. So, yeah. We'll, we'll have to You're right. It's not a spreadsheet to do that because correct. we have a number of funds that have monthly dividends. And every time we... I assume you track that anyway monthly. Yes. Well, our fund group tracks it, which is T. Rowe Price, but they... If that's fine, too. Most brokers will maintain cost and show your accumulated... Right. They do it for individuals, but a lot don't do it for organizations. Right. And do that's they do it for us? Problem. No. They probably would if you asked. The reason they don't do it is because they need you have. They know you have no tax reason to do it. Hmm, that's an interesting. Uh, I just talked to them today. Well, I'll have another discussion. Okay. Uh, now that we're clear on what it is, yes, okay. you're right. Otherwise, yes, it, there, it would require the use of a spreadsheet or some other method to to uh, to do that. Yeah. Correct. Well, we can handle it. Yeah. Okay. So and that's all we're talking about. Yeah. That that's yeah. And now, if Rod has any questions about this or Sandra, can they do they ask you? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd be happy. Or to. Sandra can talk. With we're channeled through Sandra. Yeah. Yes. Right. So yeah. act then, if T. Rowe Price will track it through their statements, we ha don't need anything but the statements. Theoretically, yeah. The the. Bank statements are bank statements, and just like you could say, I don't need to record everything on the bank statement because like, here's 12 of my bank statements and those are my records, you still need to make, there's, you still have original records. That Well, you'd make your journal entries. Correct. And so that would I would assume, that. right, and so it doesn't mean it has to be done every month. It might be done once a year, once a quarter, but you still should have books and records that show your trust funds that aren't just the bank statements. Bank statements are just bank statements. Mm -hmm. And you happen to have your your investments today at T. Rowe Price, but in the future you may say, I don't know, CDs may be a better deal someday. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I lived through 12 and 13 percent interest rates. You know, where I would rather have had my money in the CD. So, yeah. so I, you know, I, it's fine, but you need to understand that bank statements aren't. They're they're simply a verification of what's happened. You really should have invested in zero coupon treasuries when interest rates were <laughs> actually. <laughs> I did have a few. Yeah, those were fun to track. I've had a lot of clients that have those and they're fun really? to track. Oh. Sure. Yeah. 
So does that all make sense in terms of? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think we understand that. Can, can we ask one other question? So sure. and you're, you also advise us to have an investment policy statement. Is that for the treasurer's office, basically? It's really for the whole town. I mean, anyone who invests should have an investment policy. And But would it include the cemetery fund? Why wouldn't it? Well, we already have one. Oh, that. then you're fine. But but does it then, so we if we have one for that, aren't you suggesting we have one for the treasurer's yes, office as well. for investing in? Okay, yeah. so we need to supplement it with that, or we should. Yeah, and it probably would be different than what you have for the cemetery because right. your your you know your reasons for investing and your liquidity needs are probably way different than Completely what the town would be. Different. Right. Sure. So we have a cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Investment policy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm You're getting this all down, right, Judy? <laughs> we have three we sentences. We should probably. Okay. Yeah. This is all discussion. Yeah, they discussed investment. Yeah, I know. I remember. I just thought we would have a copy handy. So. So if you were to go on the VL, if you were to go on the VLCT website, they have some boilerplate investment policies that you can use, and like most municipals, you know, there it's the slide theory: safety, liquidity, yield in that order. And they'll talk about what they think are prudent investments yeah. for your municipality. Well, yeah, I mean, Everybody gets to make their own decisions, though. There's no rules in Vermont. You can right. invest in anything you choose to. Well, I know Rod was helpful Including with Including bitcoins the... and gold, if you choose. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. Rod was helpful with the cemetery. Right, right. Investments. Yeah, yeah, we have that. It's dated so. March 24th, 2013, and Sandra's copies of this, too. Yeah. In her, so it certainly wouldn't hurt to look at that as a starting yeah, point. Make sure it's on our website. It's actually called Callow Cemetery Funds Investment Strategy, so we have to change strategy to policy. Right, and maybe, right, we should change. Well, strategy is fine too. We can, oh, okay. <laughs> doesn't okay. need to be that, yeah. 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 Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, we, Great. we can work on that. If yeah, just we can. make yeah. a, just um, call Sandra and make the time ahead of time, hopefully not on a Monday. I always email her and find out what the best time for her. Yeah. Yes, he does. Good. Thank you. We appreciate that. Okay. Yes, and I we do. appreciate all of Rod's help with our investment stuff. We're very lucky to have him. So other than the cemetery funds being in, in track that market, other than that, all the other funds are in full conformance with modified cash basis. So, About the uh, swim funds. We have... A, a small swim in, in material. Vanguard is in too material. small. Okay. Therefore, we, we don't worry about dollars or pennies or hundreds of dollars. Okay. Yeah, they, don't words, have, they don't have enough money. I understand that. That's right. Now. So if they had $100 or $0, frankly, it wouldn't matter to our opinion. Okay. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it just wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're solvent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is also an audit on page three. You'll see an audit done in accordance with government auditing standards. That's one of the few things required by statute that um, when they allowed municipalities to eliminate the position of local auditor, they said, okay, if that's true, but but it, if it's going to be done by a CPA, it's got to be done in accordance Where are you with on page three? Bottom paragraph. Okay. That it has to be done in accordance with government auditing standards. And that that means that the our standards for our education, our experience is higher than it would be to do a normal, a normal audit. Mm -hmm. It also means that we have to include a report on compliance and internal control at the financial statement level right in the bound report. And that is the very last letter that we will see in this audit. Okay. So the, the way that the audit is kind of function is it starts from condensed, combined, and as you work your way back, you get more and more detail. Mm -hmm. So the very first exhibit is a very combined, condensed statement of net position for the whole town as a whole, everything included. Exhibit A. Yeah, exhibit A. Mm -hmm. And you know, you'll see all of your assets, a uh, few liabilities being payroll liabilities, a tax sale overpayment, and money due to others. Really money that's cash that you have that's not yours. I know yeah. I had one question on this. I saw it in several places where it talked about deposits with insurance company, 5,500. Yep. What is that? Oh, that's the HRA. That's, that's the, the HRA, HRA. money. Oh, Correct. Okay. All right. Yep. That is your money until it gets spent. Okay. If it was HSA money, it wouldn't be your money. But being right. HRA money, it is still okay. your money because it's you'll carry it until it goes. Mm -hmm. And investments are what we just talked about. Correct. Okay. That would include all investments. Yeah. 
Um, so what that leaves you is your unrestricted total fund balance. That doesn't mean that some of that money isn't spoken for, but it is, from a government-wide standpoint, unrestricted. And that was 531218 at the end of the year. A year ago, if you were to look at your 17 audit, that was 93300 So it's an increase substantially in that year. That's good. That's good, yes. Um, what, what most towns and boards and taxpayers really think about is on page six, because that's what affects their tax bill, and that's the general fund. And so the way that this audit's broken out, or any audit, is that it's, we, we use major funds, and that's a mathematical calculation, what, what a major. So your general fund and your cemetery fund qualify as major funds. And is this page six? Yes. And all of your other funds are non-major funds, which means they didn't meet the mathematical test. And that's the reappraisal, the conservation commission, lakes and ponds, Curtis Pond Dam, East, Mont East uh, EMFD fund, equipment fund. Really? Uh, town hall fund, technology fund, highway equipment fund. Yeah. So, um, and they're all combined in that non-major. However, when we go in the back, you'll see all the detail by fund. So you, mm -hmm. you, in there somewhere is all the funds, but may not be shown up here. So the general fund at the end of uh, June, and you're, you're really caught up now. I mean, you're probably one of the first board meetings. I do a ton of them. And the fact that we were able to get 17 done and now 18 done before the end of September is really great. I mean, that, that gets you right up to date, current, Excellent. probably ahead of most towns, frankly, from being behind to catching up. most to catching up and then getting ahead. So, well, thank uh, you. We appreciate your Well, that's, that's really your work because we can only come in when things are closed and reconciled. We don't start until you're done. Yeah. And so, you know, now Excellent. you're done, you can now focus on the next year. Right. And not right. worry about QuickBooks anymore. <laughs> Much, <laughs> much. So the, the unassigned fund balance um, at the end of uh, 2018 was 308,300. It's uh, like third or fourth line at the bottom. The 318? 318. 318, three, yep. Um, a year ago, that was 131,000 negative. Wow. Um, most of what, frankly, is you knew you had a deficit and you took out deficit debt, $280,000. And then you also had positive variances in your budget on both the revenue side and the expense side. So between the deficit reduction and bringing in more money than was planned and spending less money than planned. We're in the, we're in the good. You're in the real good. I mean, yeah, in, in total, you increased the fund balance by $458,000. So when I look at a fund balance, people, you know, they always said, is that an That was the plan. <laughs> well, it certainly was the plan to eliminate the deficit. Right. Because so. that we knew. We have to do that. Yeah, you have to do that. Plus, and we did some savings and stuff, so. So now, typically, the next question is, what's it, what is an appropriate fund balance? Right. And the GFOA, Government Finance Officers, kind of recommends about 20% of annual expenditures. Right. Well, you're right at 20%. Correct. I did the calculation. and said, wow, you're right at that number. Now... That then a lot of it has to do with, you know, where do you stand in terms of infrastructure? Do you have capital needs? How much money should really you be setting aside? Mm -hmm. What's your tax rate been doing? Are you at the point where you've been taxing people and now you feel like you want to stabilize it for a bit? Because that, that's why having a, a fund balance is important. Primarily it's for cash flow. Now for cash flow, at least last year, your first tax bill was due in August. Is that, mm -hmm. Was that true for the summer too? No, it was due on September Fourth, I believe, okay. last year and this year uh, as well. Okay. okay. So you've got two months of expenses that you need to carry. Mm -hmm. This year we didn't have to take out a loan in anticipation of taxes. Right. Which is the first year that I can remember in a long time right. that we haven't had to do that. And that makes sense because you have 318000 right. which is 20%. Two months of expenses is about 16.5% which means that you had that money there for right, your so cash flow. Right, so we don't interest on Correct. the loan, and so it be short term. I always look at your tax cycle as being sort of an indicator of how much cash kind of you need as a minimum, mm -hmm. and so I'd say that at least 16.5% you know, is, is a minimum because that's right. when your tax money starts coming in. Well, and then this year we had to wait for the state to make up its mind right. on certain things before we could even send out right. the tax Because they weren't good. They didn't know the education and the right. budget. And right. I know all I of think, that. Right, because ours right. probably would have gone out sooner had we right. had that information. Right. And so if, if at some point you change your cycle back to a July 1st, first due date, 
it might mean that you need less fund balance in that particular mm -hmm. year. But with the state, I mean, yeah, we're not done yet. I mean, no, you we're know not. we're not done yet. No, we're I not. mean, we're going to go through that same process, if not this year, then certainly next. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of the budgets and the approvals and. Right. Well, I think we're trying to look at some things long term, like we have some of these reserve funds yep. to help like when we need to do maintenance on this building right. and we had it for the town hall, we have it for yep. trucks. So we're trying to keep the budget yep. steady. I mean we learned a lot we learned a very hard lesson a few years ago where we charged less tax than what the voters actually approved and that helped us get into a mess. Right. Um, but we learned our lesson. Right. And our attorney said, if you set the, that's what the town voters vote, then that's what you do. Right. Yeah. So we learned a lesson. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, you're in good shape, at least going into the year you're in now. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know where you stand now in terms of your budget actuals, but, you know, we've just got winter starting and, right. you know, and that's where roads and salt and who knows what will happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully yeah. we'll get a lot of rain because we need a lot of rain. But, right. Um, and we also don't want it to wash out the roads. <laughs> but not enough to wash the roads, right. right. Just enough to refill the aquifer. But. <laughs> so. All right. Um, then, you know, going forward, uh, the, starting on page 8, there's about uh, 16 pages of footnotes that describes who you are, what your accounting policies are, mm -hmm. how, you know, what you have for cash and investments, how you secure those cash and investments. Um, it talks about interfund balances, um, talks about the various fund balance. Yeah. There's a lot of, unfortunately, footnotes on the fact that you participated to Beamers and what your share of their unfunded liability is. Yeah, I wasn't sure I really understood all that. Well, but. you you participate in Beamers, which is a cost sharing multiple employer plan right. in all the state. Right. It's, it's right. not funded as well as it should be, although it's probably still one of the best funded plans in the nation. What percentage of at the end of uh, 17, because they're always a year behind, it was 83.64 percent. That's not terrible. Uh, at the end of 2015, it was 98.3 percent. Wow, that's unusual. So it's going down, going even down. though the market's up. <coughs> but that's because of some of it is timing. It's there's a lag. Some of it is the changes in the demographics that people are living right. longer. That, right, I was going to say. Yeah, I mean, the actuaries, it's, it's estimates based on assumptions, based on projections, based on guesses. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have an aging population, probably I'm just guessing a lot of people are retiring that right. earn less money. Right, right. And they're retiring, some are retiring I'm assuming earlier, they collect on, longer. I'm assuming they're working on. That's right. They are. Looking at that. They are. Yeah. I would and so. If you were accrual basis, I'd actually have to record that on your financial statements. Your share of that, it's about $122,000, I think. You're kidding. Oh, in total. Oh, yeah, but I, I, not But technically, here. they could come back <coughs> at us for a percent for that share if it came up short. It won't because their actuaries know that the rates that they have now are adequate in to, any to situation, up. in all yeah. situations. Yeah, but technically. But technically, we you are, are the only way to fund it. We are right. responsible. By the way, the reason Pitches. why that the municipal wow. one is so well funded is because they can bill you. On the other hand, the state teachers and the state employees is miserable. We're talking billions of dollars. I thought the state employees one was pretty good. I thought no, the it's employees awful. were good, but no, the teachers were bad. No, they're both awful. Where's no. the employees at? Because they were at 89% at one point. It's still a billion dollars. Oh. I mean, you can look at the state audit. Yeah. I guess and not when you spread that among 635,000 people or whatever we have now, 685, it's, it's a big number. You know, I mean, it just, yeah. you know, you're right. It may be pretty well funded, but it's still a big number. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I didn't think it was 98. And you're right, the teachers no, was, was like 50 or 60. I know that the teachers is the worst. Teachers is That's the worst. That's because they take their health care out of it, which is stupid. Right. Right. So anyway, um, going back then on schedules four, and, and now actually I'm going to start you on page 34, schedules six, seven, eight, and nine. These are your other funds. Um, and all of the funds have positive fund balances. These are your reappraisal and conservation commission funds. Okay, this is page 34, you said? Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And then on page 36 are all your capital project funds. They are set aside money for various projects coming coming up. And again, all of them have positive fund balances. Yeah, now let me see. Now, oh, I know, I had a question on, can I ask it on page 36? Yep. It shows the town hall reserve fund. Mm-hmm. 
But don't we have a town hall and a town office? Is that did we? Did you we always had the town hall. It was called the town hall fund, but and we then we we pulled it apart, right? We pulled it apart. But when did we do that? We pulled it apart in April. <coughs> This is 2017. Oh, this was, but that's this is still the total. That would still be the total. total. Yes. Right. Okay. But half is town office and half was town hall. Yes. Right? That is de that is the total. That's the total. Okay. But that's what I wanted, wanted to, to, to know. Right. Okay. If, if if anything, it would be town hall, town office slash slash. Yeah. Right. right. So in your NEMRIC system, make sure that or any whoever knows that you want those as two funds. We, and we have it Perfect. set up that Perfect. way. Perfect. Not, not right, because going we'll forward, we want to, we are doing a bunch of renovations on the town hall, so we want to keep that separate. We've yep. got some work we need to do it's, here. It's in QuickBooks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. breakout is in QuickBooks. We'll yeah. get that number. That's Perfect. It's going to be fine. Okay, great. Okay, that was my question. All right, sorry. And then finally, in the, on page 38 and 39, there's the report on compliance and return control. But this is, this is at high level, financial statement level. What that tells you on the top of page 39 is that we found two items that we consider to be material weaknesses. And those are things that we think we need to address immediately. Right. We That's in the management letter as it's, well. Well, right. in, as well, right. right. We repeat it in the management letter, yeah. but it has to be bound in with the audit. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we had one significant deficiency, and then as we tell you in the, we had no compliance issues at all, and then we had some other recommendations in a separate letter, which is the management compliance letter. Compliance issues being? Violations of laws or regulations. Oh, we had none of those. Oh, good. Well, I hope not. Yeah. A lot of places do, but not, you know, nothing really significant, but they could. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, there's lots of laws and regulations you deal with every day. Right. We're not looking at every one of them. We're looking at only those that would cause your financial statements to be materially misstated. So, if you had a grant and you spent a hundred thousand dollars on something you shouldn't have, well, that's a problem. that would be a violation of law regulation okay. that would be brought up here. Right. And the grant people wouldn't like it either. Nope. That's the problem. They'd want their money back. Right. No right. doubt. Right. So, some of these have probably been already addressed. Some of the so, so we're looking uh, at the management letter now? We could go right to that. They're all in there too. Okay. So there are three deliverables in an audit. Mm -hmm. One is the financial statement we just looked at. Right. The second is the management letter. And the third is just a report that goes directly to the board that just tells you how the audit went. Right, which and, is what this is. Uh, if it has recommendations, it's not that. No, that's the management letter. I got confused. There were so many letters. There's three letters. Two letters and one bound document. Okay, I have this man. I think it's the man. It doesn't have a date at the top. It's a draft. Uh, they're final now. And I've got them right here. So if you. It probably says the same thing, right? Should be saying yeah. the same thing, yes. And then there were these two other letters. One was FY17, one was FY18. They basically said the same thing. There, it's that's dates. the letters of the board. And what that tells you is we were the. And I can just talk real quick on those, and then we can go to the recommendations. Uh, we were cooperated with, uh, everything was ready. We had no problems, no difficulties, no disagreements, no. Uh, the audit went very smoothly considering the you know, the transformation from modified accrual to cash and the fact we we're trying to play catch up. Uh, but all in all, the audit went right. very well, okay. both for 17 and particularly yeah. for 18. Well, yeah, because I was reading them. I'm like, this sounds like the same as the other. It one. is, but, but we have to issue okay. separate letters for two years. Yeah, okay. The gotcha. management letter we can combine because it's the same recommendation. Right, okay. So the material weaknesses were, and this is one that, that's common, but we, it's important, and that's the segregation of, segregation of duties over okay. caps. We yep. just want someone other than the check signer yep. either doing the bank reconciliation or reviewing it in detail. Right. We're working on that, as Sandra Perfect. pointed out. Yep. And I don't know whether she's heard anything more back, but we can discuss it at a later time. Okay. Um, the second one is already, I know, dealt with, and that's fund balance entries. Those are entries that historically the town has, town has done in a way to track reserves, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it really shouldn't happen. That, that won't happen again. Correct. And then the, the significant deficiency was just simply having authorization and support for all journal entries, making sure that somebody reviews them. And so, mm -hmm. in that, you know, monthly, quarterly, if, if, if you print out all the journal entries and you look at them and say, and ask questions if you have questions mm -hmm. and sign off on them, that's all we're looking for. And that's different than the warrants? Yes. Yeah, if you've seen those journal entries, they, uh, when I, I, 
brought you those journal entries when we've made corrections, when right. there have been errors, mm -hmm. and you sign off on them. Yep. Yep. We have a notebook of those. Okay, right. that's what we need to do. When there's problems, journal entries can be used to hide those problems. Okay. So if a second set of eyes isn't looking at them, mm -hmm. then you've left yourself susceptible to errors or irregularities. Right. So it becomes important to, for that second set okay. of eyes to look yep. at them. So, so that's part of, yeah, that's part of Part of the process. process. Just right. like you were doing with the warrants, Right. same with the journal entries. Okay. Just All review right. them. If they make sense to you, if they don't, then yep. ask the question and yeah. then sign, sign the sheet once a month. Not every, not before they're done and not, it just, you know, once a month, once a quarter, that's okay. fine. All right. The rest of the items in the uh, management letter are simply just recommendations, not in any particular level of importance, but just all the other things we thought you should think about. Okay, so I had a question about um, other recommendations, fraud policy. Yes. Does, do you know, and I can ask, I'll call VLCT and ask them, but is there a sample one yes. somewhere? Yes, there is, absolutely. They have one on their website, yes, okay. through the MAC Center. Okay. And it just as it says is if, if, and I hope it never happens, but if somebody in town suspected something, mm -hmm. what do they do? What do you do? Right. I mean, the time to start to think about this not when it happens, but before, so that there's a plan. And what do you do to make sure that you protect both the accused and the accuser? Uh -huh. Right. And so you want to make sure right. that you, you want have somebody process. in town that might suspect something to feel comfortable going to one Correct. somebody with the information and remaining nameless and all that stuff. Correct. And yeah. at the same time, you want to be able to make sure you do everything to make sure that the person that accused is protected as well right. until it's proven or right. not proven. Okay. So, and I hope it never happens, but if it does, you do want to know ahead of time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the fraud risk assessment is simply a brainstorming of basically everybody in town. I'm trying to understand what things are you susceptible for? Where, in, in, in Calus, what things could, could go wrong? What, where could you, where, what things could happen? How much folding green do you collect? Do we have good procedures related to that? Are you collecting cash? Oh. Cash. Where, how do you know that all the vendors that you use are real? How do you, um, how do you make sure that the town assets aren't being misused by town employees? So you're how saying you, this to do this like an exercise at a select board meeting maybe? No, it's better it's a work session. Uh, this, that's really not a, I don't think a select board meeting is the appropriate place to do it, although certainly a select board person or two could be there. Okay, but it's more so. for the department heads and staff to sit around and just talk. Okay. And either it can be facilitated by VLCT does it, if you feel comfortable on your own. Mm -hmm. And out of it, you just simply come up with a document that, that talks about risks and mitigating factors. Okay. And then you get to decide if the mitigating procedures are appropriate. Mm -hmm. And you also get to decide the cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. in terms of what kind of controls. You can't get a perfect system. Okay, so, you, but you said VLCT will sometimes come out and work with us on yeah, this? Yeah, yes. Okay, so we could probably do this like at a staff extended staff meeting or something. Yeah, as long yeah. As it won't take long yeah. because, you know, you're, you're okay. pretty straightforward here. You you don't have utilities, you don't sell a lot of things, you don't, I mean, so it's, you know, the opportunities are pretty, the risk is pretty low, frankly, but okay. but, but it's important to do. All right, so um, that's, are you getting okay with that in the minutes, Judy, or do you need well, to catch up? Well, it's all right here. Uh, I think I get that. Yeah, I mean, it's all right yeah. here anyway, so. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about the recommendation that we asked VLCT to come in and help us with that. So the documentation of the control system is there's lots of things you do. We've already talked about some of them, doing a bank reconciliation, uh, yeah. uh, issuing receipts. You, you do these things because they're a cookbook, they're a procedure. What the control system documentation is, is explaining why you do things. What's the purpose? What am I trying to catch? Mm -hmm. it, it's saying we do this, but why do we do this? What, why is it important that I review journal entries? What's the purpose of doing that? And so. This is kind of a last step once you have everything else done and you think you have good, you know, everything's mm -hmm. taken care of, mm -hmm. then you really should document your control well, system. Well, then there's a form for internal controls that I think the league, I think it comes from the league. Eh, I wouldn't even bother. Don't do that? You can if you like. It's pretty, it's pretty perfunctory. It's pretty. It doesn't, yeah. It's it doesn't do much, frankly. So what do we use then? You can, there are templates. We can share things that other towns have done with you. Okay, that would be helpful. Yep, yep. The town of St. Johnsbury has done a really nice job with this, okay, and they're I willing to share we're their. I have to go back to the VLCT internal controls document where you just check off boxes. That's just, a, and I don't, to me, this isn't a check off. This is a, this is more of a documentation. This okay, is more. That of sounds a, better. 
Yeah, and it's and and the, one of the other points that we're going to hit is the accounting manual. And so you start with the accounting manual. That to me is a cookbook. <clears throat> how do I write a check? What does the board do? Who, how where do they approve? How does that happen? How do I pay payroll? How do I how, just so that if, if Sandra were here and somebody else, an experienced person, not a somebody who doesn't know accounting at all, could walk in mm -hmm. and do her job, so that. You know, right, I mean, and that's going to take some time. That's gonna it be, takes time, and we right. say that. Just right. you know, yep. that's a process at the time. You know, just when right. you have time, pick something you're going to do. Okay, this this quarter I'll do payroll. Next quarter I'll do payables and right. orders. The next quarter I'll do PACS billing. The next quarter I'll do other receipts. And, right. And yeah, you, we just don't you, want to overwhelm our. Yeah, <laughs> but it was something you would have loved to have had had you walked in. And I had, had it. She had eight years worth of. Yeah. Cookbooks. And that's great then. And what right. you need to make sure is that that eight years is still all accurate and it's what you do now. And it's not because right. we're in Nimerick. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. No, Donna, Donna did a really and good job of documenting right. stuff. Right. So. And it's always going to be a document that changes yeah. because as you change, right. as the state changes what you have to do, as they right. modify, yeah. you have to react to it. So it's an ongoing process. Yep. So. All right. Um, investment in banking, we already talked about. Uh, the bank reconciliations were being done, but they weren't being tied to the general ledger. And so when, when Nemrick, Nemrick has a module that automatically... Okay, runs. that was my question. Does Nemrick do this? Yes. It does. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. And they'll either, they'll either have the module for you to do. Frankly, they'll do it. I mean, they, they provide that service. So I heard you saying that, you know, if you can't find somebody that will do your bank recs, that is a service to them. I'm trying to sell for them, right? Okay? But oh, okay. they do. Well, that's they, good to know. They do that actually. Yes. That's very good to know because yeah. we're working on an op, uh, an option. We hope works out. But if we don't get that, then we may have to do something else. Right. Right. Um, the overbilling of property taxes. I uh, you may already know more about this than I do. That was I, the process. Yeah. <laughs> So again, I think it was just simply that whatever it was, a, it was a preliminary document. It wasn't yep. the amount that was voted on at town meeting. I don't think it was a huge difference, but it was a difference. And no. I think it ended up being a total of like thirteen thousand right. dollars or so. something. It was, but it, we spent a lot of time on it. Right. And like I said, we we learned a lot. Right, right. And then the investments we already talked about yeah. in terms of getting them. How? What's the easiest way to get them back to cost? If you had the records that showed. But lacking the records, the easiest way is to liquidate and rebuy. Yeah, and that we have it. records that go back to the point where we first started investing in mutual funds. Right. So, but uh, that may not be it doesn't cost. Go, it doesn't right. go back beyond CDs. Right. Which and so the key is the date. The fact that we are now on this new accounting method means we have to do it following the conversion to the new accounting method. I sell and rebuy. Yeah, you, like I said, you have to do it once and then track. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter when you do it. That'll get it back to cost. It won't be cost the next day, but it'll be cost that day. And as long as you know what that is and then track your in, your reinvested earnings, then you're fine. And any future exchanges or changes Correct. that we make. Correct. It does seem like... And I do think your investment company will do that for you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk to them about that. It does seem sort of illogical that you would do that since what's really important is the current market value absolutely okay so I agree with that okay. that's what I'm saying don't don't yeah no don't not get don't get rid of the market because that's what you could sell it for and get right but in order to comply with this standard of accounting you just have to it's comply. It, accounting isn't perfect okay well, even we'll even for profit in fact it's very imperfect because I could have two buildings right next to each other with the same utility one of them was built in 1960 and one of them built in 2000. The 1960 is going to have a value on the books of a million dollars. The one in built in 2000, the exact same building, same utility, every, all finished, everything could be one million. You know, so you'd have one, one at 100,000, one at a million, same building. And that's the way they stay forever. Counting is imperfect. But, no. but cost is perfect. We know what cost right. is. And so right. accounts like to be able to prove things. things. Whether it means anything. And in this right. case, it doesn't. It doesn't, just like those two buildings. Right. right. <laughs> OK. Because you could choose to sell the building at 100000 and show this huge profit, or sell the other building and show no profit, and manipulate you. So right. Right? Okay. I mean, that's, right. yeah. And by the way, so businesses do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah. I thought last year we put, it was it last year or the year before, Judy, maybe you remember, Rose, did we put something in the town report about audits, about having an audit done? You put it in the night? No, I think there is a copy of the management letter or something. Yeah, the management letter or um, a summary. Something we, I don't think it wasn't last year's, it must have been the year before. It was the year before, I remember this. Year so, before. what most more and more of our towns are doing is putting the full audit on their websites and the three reports, mm -hmm. making them available. Um, okay putting a single letter that we can write for you in your town report that, that says that they're available for inspection on the website and at the town office. Yeah. And that we're not doing Just anything. A single I page. can't tell you that that meets the letter of the law. I can tell you it probably meets the spirit of the law. Okay. We'll take the spirit. But, right. But, but the, you know, remember the law was written in 18... Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that would be great because we're getting ready to start working on the town report. Right. So when you get a chance, if you could, ship we'll get you that, that letter. Yeah, we'll get it to you in PDF yeah. or whatever format your printer mm -hmm. likes it in. We can get that to you. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I don't know if there's or, any other specific or general questions, or Sandra has one. <laughs> I do. Yeah. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. can uh, you and I just walk through the way Jordan and I did to illustrate really what this audit means? to the board and and I'll tell you I'll go ahead tell what you're you thinking about what yeah. I mean and you probably know so if we go to uh, okay first let's go to page six of what of the 2018 audit and Fred pointed out that we have a general fund balance of three hundred eighteen thousand three hundred dollars right so Fred is it a six. true statement that not only do we have that fund balance at the end of the year, but all of our reserve funds and special programs are fully funded as well. They're not tucked into that three. No, they're not. Three. Every other fund that you see, correct, is not part of that 318. It, it might be that the cash is commingled, but it would show up as the due to other fund. And so it's taken out of the 318. The 318 is general fund only with everything funded. With everything funded. So, correct. So it's... Um, when, when you were in a deficit, um, oftentimes you're living off of your reserve funds, mm -hmm. So, but you're not at this point in time. So all yeah. of your reserve yeah. funds have their own amount of right. money, and there is also this to support our cash flow. And what you guys may have noticed in this order, we just spent, I think, close to $70,000 toward a highway uh, grant project, yes. toward two well, highway grant projects, and Jack Hill, right? which, mm -hmm. you, um, which we must spend first and then wait for reimbursement, and sometimes that may straddle um, fiscal years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. very important that we have that fund right. balance, and, and yeah. that is, you not necessarily want to refund any of that money mm -hmm. to the taxpayers, especially oh, no. when we're we have so many highway um, grants percolating along, and I'm then have, I'm going to have a question if you don't ask it. I, well, I'm going to get to okay. that. So if we hop over to page 25, it's probably the same question I have. Um, I just want to take. I just want to go with Fred through this thought process and have him confirm if it is a oh, logical. Highway budget. Yes, if it's if it's logical. Okay. Are you on page? Getting there. Okay. Uh, Twenty-five. So the the bottom fifth of the highway budget has a string of negative numbers, the beginning whole. with twenty-five thousand eight hundred fifty-five. Right. Most of it's grants, though, right? Mm-hmm. The twenty-five thousand eight hundred. So. That was when we reduce the highway budget to actual by those negative numbers, the highway would appear to look as if it overspent by 14307 Is that a, a fair statement? Correct. Mm -hmm. If we go then to page... Um, one page before the... One page, yes, yeah, 24. 24. Page yeah. 24. We go to page 24. Yeah. About a third of the way through the page, all the way on the right, you're going to see a number, $57,748. Is that all the highway grants? And that is money that was not 
and t budgeted for. So it, it, it is a revenue in excess of what you budgeted for. And if you look to the left, you'll see zeros and uh, because it wasn't budgeted. And those are grant receipts. Uh, so oh, I see. All right? Yeah. Is that, is, that, yep. is that a good explanation? So if we hop back to page uh, 25, that 14, negative 14,000 then actually becomes a positive $43,441. It's the, the negative seven. expenses over budget mm -hmm. plus the positive the revenues that were in excess of what we budgeted for. Which was the grant reimbursements. Yes. Okay. So your highway surplus, is it a fair statement to say that this is representative of the highway surplus at the end of 2000, at the end of FY18? It's the highway surplus for the year. For FY18. Correct. What I don't know is if I know what that highway what it started at, right? Did it start at a higher surplus? Oh, we never, oh, I right. have an answer to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't film that. Um, we, do, we don't have highway surpluses. Highway surpluses, if there are any, are rolled over into the, the Capital Equipment, equipment Fund, fund. Right. by uh, article yep. several years ago. So we have no highway surplus we only have a highway capital equipment fund that is reflected in yep. the fund balances, I think, on page 30. Yep, and that makes sense to six. me because those are restricted, and we do say that in the footnotes that they're extended because it's highway. So the tax. 37 will go into that fund. So the $43,441 yeah. is that an amount of, is that fair to say that that is an amount of money that would be rolled over to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund pursuant to that article that requires the town to do that? Yeah, and the only one that I don't know for sure and that you would be the, but I assume because it was bought with highway months is the, is the proceeds from the sale of the excavator, the 28 grand. So I talked with Jordan about that yeah. and they, and I don't, I don't, wasn't here for that transaction. Right. So they sold an excavator, mm -hmm. they received 28,000, they paid something off, I don't know what that right. was. They had $25,855 left and that was rolled over into the Highway right. Capital Equipment Fund. So. Right. That was already moved in FY18. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't include that. And mm -hmm. it, it's a negative, it's not a positive. Right, but the, but the transfer's in there too. So yes, yes, it doesn't change the total. So when the operations manager asks about what money got put into that fund, it's the 40, 43. 43. The, well, no money has been moved, but that is the Surplus. amount of money that would be moved into your highway capital Can equipment. Can we get the exact fund. dollar amount for the minutes? Well, I can't tell you to the penny but because these are rounded, but it is $43,441 plus or minus. I just have to say, I'm not taking this level of detail minutes. You don't I mean, need to. I, so budget dis audit I mean, discussed. Yeah, I mean I'm for taking FY twenty seven. Right okay. So the only, that are going, okay. the only the only purpose in this discussion was mm -hmm. to assist the board in walking through a conversation that the board has had annually to about how much to transfer what the highway surplus is and right. so it. I spent a good deal of time with Jordan mm -hmm. to be able to take this information mm -hmm. and then create, I think, a step-by-step -step process to think about it. But mm -hmm. I wanted to have Fred say that was okay. Yeah, if that's what the, and that was a board motion in years past or voter motion? It was an no. article. article. Okay, okay. So, voter, then, so then it sounds like you have no choice. Right. And so then, yes, you would do the calculation and then present the board and they would make a motion to transfer and then that would then get moved. Okay. And that would yeah, we may want to we may that wanna a, have a different article, have it read a little differently, I think. We talked about. Yeah. Well, you might want to just put a, an amount of money in your budget to, to, as an appropriation to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. And then, seed number maybe. Yeah. And then. Yeah. 
But then what if there's a surplus, then what do you do with it? That's right. As you, would, you would have to be restricted for highway fund use, but it would, it would just roll over from year to year. So if okay. that number one year was a negative $43,441 and you had the money, to yeah. back you up, then you're not in a deficit. You in total. In total, right. right. In total budget, but, not highway but, necessarily. And the, re the only reason I hesitate is when I said annual, because theoretically, <clears throat> it is a rolling number, and a negative would be offset by a positive. positive. And so if we walked into 16 with negative, but at some point you just got to say, I don't know what it is, and let's just move forward. And I think that's where you are at this point. And so if, if, if it's worded to say on an annual basis, mm -hmm. we have a highway surplus, it needs to be moved to the capital fund, or however you, as a board, decide you want yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, ask your voters to approve, yeah, I then, have right. I... then you just need to do whatever that article says. And so uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the lesson is obviously is that make sure the article is worded the way you really want it to happen. Right. Yeah. Because right. once voted on, That's then it. your hands right. are tied. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so really, this exercise for me was just a reminder for me and and to help you understand your audit of how we can use these audits to distill the highway surplus funds by going through them and picking out the information that we would use to make that calculation. Okay. Very good. good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Anything else, Sandra? Oh, I just want to tell you, it's been a delight working with you and your firm. Everyone is so polite and always speaks in plain language. I really appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah, plain language <laughs> is good. Yeah, <laughs> sure is. Yeah. So thank you very You're much welcome. for stepping yeah. in and helping yeah. us out and Great. making this all whole again. And if you know anytime you have questions, don't you know feel free thank to you. Oh, yeah. and then of course we have QuickBooks. Right, and then we'll need to do the audit after FY19 ends. Correct. So now it should be you're on cycle, cycle, you're caught up. And will we have a, a cost idea to put in the budget going forward? You, you do, you have a three year contract. Right, you okay. went up to bid, you have a three year bid, so we're still one, two, this is still one third, we're still in the third okay, year. Okay, so this is really considered one. Correct. Okay, good. Yep. Very good. Great. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Welcome. We right. really appreciate nice. doing good. business with you. Take care. Thanks. See you, Fred. Yeah, take care. All right, I guess I can go with Fred. You did. You did right. that with Fred. Thank you. Ron, enjoy. Ron, thank you. Ron, thank, thank you very much. Where are you going? Only my wife's going. Oh, only oh, your wife. Oh, well, you still have to. You better rush home and say yeah. goodbye. Uh, <laughs> so I'll be in touch. So I'll pass out the bottom stuff. So. Okay. Thank, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Ron. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad I allowed plenty of time for that. That was very good. Very helpful. Everybody sign the warrants or in the process? I just started. There's a lot. Well, I do. I was right. no, riveted no. listening to Fred well, and of Sandra. Course we should listen. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's what I thought. I said, yeah. oh, if I sit here and look run. like he's boring me, that doesn't look too no, good. So we're starting in more locations now. What, why is that? I don't know. Because there's different days that things get run off, different batches. So it's not we, we have to sign off on all this stuff every time. Cause I, I'm not reading it. It's like I, I don't understand the value. Well, part of my job is I come in and I review everything. I look at every check number, look at the amount. No, I know, but I'm not verifying. No, I know. And, you know. So I don't know whether, I guess we should have asked Fred when he was here. Well, you need a, I believe you need a majority a quorum. A quorum to sign off on your board orders right. to release. So what you're doing is you're really believing me. Yeah. No, I, I see. Know. So that's really what it amounts to. And I, I see what you're saying, though. It just seems like you're signing off. You don't even. Really yeah, it's got no value, it. and I know, what was I reading? Somebody was just, people were just signing stuff that, without reading it, and then it got jammed up because there was something. Right. I don't know what the... Oh, what it's Hardwick Electric. What the statute requires as far as The board was just doing orders. what we do. Right. Signing off on the monthly bank statements, mm -hmm. not checking all the way back, and there was yeah, money being time. misappropriated. Right. Yeah. And they were trusting, and I'm not that I don't trust, but I mean, it's... No, that's how hard with electric got in a, in a, in a problem. Yeah. So yeah. I don't understand the value of my signing it. I'm, I'm thinking aloud here. Well, I think that's part of what happens when you have that uh, internal controls discussion. To address things like that, that's something you would brainstorm. Here's something that could go wrong. Yeah, here's something that could go wrong. Is we could be in cahoots. Oh, you get rid of it? 
and stealing the town's money, and you guys have no whole it. office here. It's like you get a, you tell me you all get along. Mm -hmm. You're not clawing each other's eyes out. Mm -hmm. I can't sign this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the checks and balances. Right. I need a rat. Right. <laughs> well, I think what we'll do is we'll investigate further the idea of having BLCT come out and do a work session, and then we can present it to the full board of what the you know here's what came up of things that we need to have some controls about. It's interesting that we don't need to use that checkbox thing that's, I don't know, one of our board members made it like three times longer than it already was for internal controls. And now he sounds like there's something better. Which is yeah, he's more valuable. from St. John's Bay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so any more? Download on the audit. Anybody wants to know or say? So I saw this thing a lot. So I don't. I mean, I'm adding value. You get three signature. That's good enough. I don't need to sign all that stuff. Okay. I'm serious. It doesn't do Lazy. anything. No, it, it's a. It serves well, no it, function. Well, except for we no have to have a quorum value. of the board that we have a signs it. Right. I'm just saying. Once well, you get three, whatever, whatever direction it goes, you get three. The rest are not the work. If it's, it's wrong, like, we're, not, we're still going to come after you. No, no, we're not verifying anything, though. I'm not, well, you I'm could, not you could blame. just pick one packet and go through it, just for, to satisfy yourself, if you wanted to. I'm not. It's not that I distrust it, but it makes no sense if I'm not if I'm not vetting this stuff. It makes right. no sense for okay. me sign, signing it. Just notes see. that I'm vetting it. I'm not vetting it. All right, so we hear you. But the problem is going That's forward. We need we need three people to sign. Yeah, it. no. I mean, I'm saying if it came this way first, I would sign it. But sign it. Okay. There's so many places to sign, and it, it, it serves no functional value. All right. Unless I look through every paper, it's, it's, which I used to look through everything, but I'm not looking through all of that. All right. Can we move on? Yep. All right. Um, so we have a joint. This is my chair update. Mission on Monday coming up at seven o'clock here. I've already posted the agenda. I think I don't. I think I didn't post it on yes. front porch form yet. I got to do that. Um. So it would be an important meeting to do, and just know that we don't have to take over the cemetery. We may. We may. There, the only way, I think there's, and I don't have everything here, and I sent it to you guys, there's an instance where you should or shall, but we're not there. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, because it sounds to me like the cemetery could involve a significant amount of work. It sounds like it's in pretty rough shape. Don't think they have a lot of money to transfer. So I think there's a good amount of discussion and questions that we need to ask. And Andy Christensen, I guess his name is, <laughs> is supposed to come to the meeting. He's the Poplar Hill Cemetery Chair, or I don't know mm -hmm. what he is, but anyways. So I have a question. Is, it, is that cemetery historically served both residents of East Montpelier and Callis? The Poplar? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a good question. My, it's that's my, there. <coughs> right, that's from East But it's in Callis. Oh, well, it's in Callis. It's right on the border. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's right on the border. Yeah. So and I guess the Christian sisters. So, um, if you look it, at... Just to, it based the, I mean, are the only options that, um, is the all, only option it, that Callis either considered taking it over or not, it, are there other options that we that could be considered like Callis and East Montpelier having joint responsibility? I think those being, are good questions. And splitting <coughs> the costs, being that we have people from both towns residing there. And well, I think those are good things to explore next Monday night, and right. Jim Barlow will be there to help oh, us good. with the, okay. the legal aspect of it. Um, there's a folder, a Google folder created for. Uh, next one night, there's copies of deeds, the copies of, okay. of their minutes that Katie populated for me. It's on our, it's in the drive. Yeah. On the shared thing. Yeah, there you go. And there may be more stuff that comes in. If you go up, back up. <coughs> there you go. 10 one. It's labeled 10 one. Oh, it's under 10 one. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff there. Um, so it should be a pretty interesting. I mean, we've never, to my knowledge, I've never been involved in any kind of a thing like this before. 
Um, another thing is... Are we going to do a site visit or no? I think that's something we should bring up. Because I'm, I'm not I'm, exactly sure I'm curious sure why we don't notice this meeting as a site visit at 6.30 and then... We can do that. Come up here at 7 or something, or 6.15 up here at 7. Because I, I want to look at that hillside, and that's really going to be key. If stabilizing that's going to cost $100,000, I'm not going near this thing, personally. Well, I can, yeah. I can I can schedule a site visit if everybody's on board with doing it at 6.30. I don't know what your work schedule is that Monday. I, mean, I don't think everyone has to, but it'd be good if, if well, someone... This is next I'm Monday, right? right? So today? Yeah, so next Monday I'm off. Or people can go up and take a look at it at their convenience. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's always... I'd like to... If you're going to go, I'd like to go with it's you. It's better to have the up. group there. You know, have a conversation. But I don't think you're going to do it at 6.30 and be back here by 7. I'm saying 6.15. 6 .15. Will it be dark by then? Why, are they setting the clocks back already? No, not yet. It's dark oh. by 7. Oh, yeah. 6.15 will be good. Okay. I, I can check and see. Don't rush it. And it won't be snowing either. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> I'm asserting that. Okay. Um, you don't have to stay. <laughs> Unless you want to, you're welcome to. But I know you've been putting in so many. It's your daughter's birthday. Is it, is it really? Oh. What are you doing here? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow is my birthday. birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Tonight, today's your birthday. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh my goodness! Really? Happy oh, birthday! Get a Facebook notice. Why would we lie about that? <laughs> no, it's tomorrow. same day. Okay, so I won't get the notice. Tomorrow. tomorrow. I live with Shami and, and my daughter. How old? Deborah, she'll be 16. <gasps> oh, my goodness. It's a big you deal. guys are the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about those until tomorrow. But there's one for everyone. There is an 18 and a 17 bound version that you should take. Yeah, I'll take the bound. I have the photocopy one, but same thing. He That's brought true. a bound. Yeah, he okay. brought a bound. We got fancy everyone. bound copies. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you very nice much. Work working with the auditors. They were very wonderful to work with, I have to say. Great. Um, I went to the Adamant Community Center Shoreland Overlay District presentation on last 1918, whatever date that was. That was a Tuesday, I guess, right? Third Tuesday, because that's when they meet. Um, they did a really nice job. All of the porters showed up. Um, oh, great. It yeah, was well. It was well attended. They did a nice job presenting it. They're going to do Who's it again. The, they the lister. The, oh, planning PC. commission. Planning Plan commission. commission. Orca came and taped it, so it'll be up on the website. Oh, good. Um, and they're going to do some more throughout town. But this presentation was specific to changes in Adamant. Yes. Right. And there, they, there were some good suggestions and good ideas. So. I couldn't go. I was bird watching. Okay. I bet you were. Is it a bird's concert? So. <laughs> All right. Um, we've been, Cliff and I were here the other day. Don't, don't, don't egg him on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need to do that at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we were here last Wednesday, and was it Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Were you here? that a call came in from a resident on County Road that a truck had parked erratically in her driveway. I don't think the person knew that she was home, and he was kind of going around the house, checking doors. He finally knocked on the door and identified himself as a town road crew worker, and he wanted to park his truck in her yard because they were doing ditching. And she thought it all seemed a little weird, and he gave her, he even gave her his name, this guy. So she thought the whole thing was a little suspicious, and he was wearing an orange vest, but it didn't feel right. <laughs> so she told him to go park in Maple Corner. In the meantime, she called the town office and the Vermont State Police. What time Police is this? Wednesday morning. That's bizarre. Um, so anyway, she was very concerned, and rightly so. She lives alone. Um, so we got to talking about it here. And she didn't want anything posted on Front Porch Forum, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. The state police showed up. Because she had the name and the license number, they recognized who it was. Apparently, the guy lives in Marshfield, and he has a criminal history. So they were going to go talk to him. Anyway, so what, that brought up the idea that maybe town employees should have some kind of ID. 
especially the road crew workers. So we're looking into. Isn't a tr town truck with it? Well, they have their name on their the uniforms. Side, town of Callis. Well, this guy. Names. Well, I guess. You can make fake IDs. You can fool anyone. How are they going to know? Well, I guess we weren't thinking negatively. I think our our trucks are about as good an ID as you're going to well, get someone. Well, you know. Yes. I, mean? I don't think anyone's going to invest in a two hundred thousand dollar plow truck just to rob Granny. Mm -hmm. Town of Callis painted on it. Probably not, but we were just thinking that maybe some ID cards for town employees. Okay. I don't know how much they would cost, but probably not too yeah, much. Yeah, if you do something like that, what you want to do then is create a procedure. I hesitate to use the word policy, um, but and educate the townsfolk that if one of the members of the road crew is going to approach you, they will state their name, they will show you their ID. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, they will, you will have the means to contact and verify all of this with the town office. Right. That was just what we were thinking because there does seem to be a, a huge increase in the amount of robberies. I mean, all you got to do is look at Front Porch Forum, and every little while there's a whole slew. And if you look at other towns and look at the Those Vermont State days. Police um, daily incident report, which I get, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. There was two incidents that day in Callis. So did the guy do any ditching? No, because there was ditch. no ditching being done. I thought we might get some free ditching. <laughs> no, no, no ditching. Okay. No ditching. Um, okay, another plea that I have, and another person that I would ask, and I'll ask her separately, is please, could you please check your email, your select board email, at least two or three times a week, and if I ask you a question about a date, which we're allowed to do in the open meeting law, respond it would be so helpful because I just don't have time to call everybody and anything about scheduling meetings agenda items that's all within all okay within the open meeting law yeah. so that would be really really helpful especially as we're getting into all this budget stuff so that brings me to I think my last one of my last items is the town meeting budgets uh, um, oh, I have yet to contact this Bob Hannon. The Bob Hannon email address that Barbara Butler gave me didn't work, so now I've got to track down a phone number or something. We're coming up with a schedule to hopefully have a representative from each major entity in town come in. That's why I told Alfred about the preliminary highway stuff. Um, we're not meeting with East Montpelier Fire Department in October because we're on this new three times a year thing, even though, anyways, that's a long story and it's all said and done, I guess. But it doesn't mean we can't ask them to come in and present us right. a budget. So I'm looking to, to do that. And then maybe we renegotiate with the East Montpelier Select Board about <coughs> getting back to the quarterly meetings as we were used to when Bruce reminded me that we all agreed that three times a year was good enough. So our normal time to meet with them would be December. We missed August because they didn't remind us. So we did. So anyways, I'm gonna put together a draft schedule and then you guys can all look at it before next regular meeting. Which brings me to my next question. October 8th is Columbus Day. Um, it might mess up our budget schedule cycle. I don't know, but it's up to you guys whether you want to meet on Columbus Day. We, I, I think we typically have. Yeah, yeah, we typically have, although um, I'm going to have company from out of state, and so I took Monday and Tuesday off from work. From so, this day. Yeah, so, I mean, conceivably, if we do a day trip somewhere, I could come to a meeting at night. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what our okay, itinerary sure is. I, I mean, they're not staying at my house or anything, oh, okay. but, yeah. you know. Um, well, how so, does everybody else feel about it? Yeah. So far, so good. Eight, I, I, like okay? I said, I forgot to check in with Joanne. Oh, I, I don't okay. know if she has. I don't think she has off. And you might go out of town if she does, right? Yeah, but I'll, I'll be back by then because she has to go to school the next day. Go to work and you, I'm off that day. I'm totally capable of attending a meeting. Okay. 
Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get though. scheduled. Budget schedule on board. And I was going to try to get some of the groups to come in on that day, but I think a better option would be to need to do up a draft. Let's review it and and then schedule folks to come in. And I think by then we might have Meg Dawkins said she wasn't ready to come in today about perennial field lane private sign. She wasn't ready to come in. Um, David Healy is going to come next meeting to talk about the Central Vermont ISP okay. and the status and what's going on with that. Okay. And I'm going to, we could ask him to write something up for the town report because we voted on it mm -hmm. last town meeting, you remember? Yep. Yeah. Um, wow, we're already at that point. You're thinking about that? Yeah. Jeez. I know. See how, see how sad my brain is? Somebody's got to think oh, about man, this. That's what, that's what happens when you work in the office every day. You're <laughs> on the game more. Not in the office every day, but I generally do something select or related every single day, including weekends. Yep. Um, and health center. And health center. And yes. what else? At 46 is this Wednesday night. Yeah. Where is that at? U32? U32. I think it starts at 5:30. And so they were looking for select boards to show up. Just a show. Right. I'm going to bring copies of the resolution. You want to warn it? To have, uh, I don't think we have to. We're not making any decisions. Okay, we're not going to. Not making any decisions. We're not going to vote to join the lawsuit. That, at would that be the, meeting. Wouldn't the school boards do that? Oh, it's a school board. I thought that they want. Okay. Would, I don't think we would vote. Okay. We? okay it's a school board. Well, what happens is um, all of the boards will discuss the merits the, of the, school the lawsuit, boards. right? And then they will break in individual sessions. Yeah, that's what Don said. And the individual boards will decide if they want to be. I mean, a part we can say not. we can say yes, we support it. But right. We're not voting. Exactly. And okay. I think we kind of with the resolution. Seven o'clock. No, I think it starts at five thirty. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask Dot for the um, agenda and send it around. Thirty. We got news today that there's an informational meeting that starts at four thirty. Actually. You can me? Then there's the five thirty to seven thirty. Okay. Is that the is that the seven thirty to not covering them all? Which is the merry-go-round one? Mm -hmm. I think that's the five thirty to seven thirty. And then the callous mm -hmm. meeting would be seven thirty to whenever. Yeah. So bring your lunch I'll go and there a snack at and a drink. Yes. Informational, Informational is to get us updated as to where we are and where we're heading. Where that is that? Do you know? That. Do you know what room it's in at four thirty? No. Probably the cafeteria. Don't I, I, think, I, think, I think I think I everything's posted and worked over there. Okay, good. We can make a copy of that. All right. Um, and then we wow. just need to be thinking about. We have some board meetings that are going to be, one is November 19th, which is Thanksgiving week. And then, of course, we have December 24th, which is Christmas Eve, which I'm sure we don't want to meet that night. And December 31st. I'll be drunk. No, December, December 31st. 31st. I'll be drunk. No, Christmas That's Eve. New Year's Eve. You don't get you drunk on Christmas on Eve. On Christmas Day. Every day. That's very Christian. Yeah, right. Drunk. I know I'll be drunk on it. I think I get drunk every day. No. Yeah, he does not. <laughs> He's not as... Talk I can't wait till I retire so I can do stuff like that. Be totally responsible. Okay. So I'm assuming there's going to be two or three can't meetings wait. coming up that we're not going to have because they're going to be holidays. He's a bull. Are you taking this? Well, the camera's still on. Vote for me. I'll send you free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? I don't know if people want to look at this policy that... Sharon created, she's not even here. Yep, she Would she, what is the policy about? It is uh, about road naming, and it's really long. It's like five pages long. Did she attach it? Uh, she mentioned that. I didn't think I saw it attached. Yeah, she attached it. It was attached. Okay. Yeah, but it's let's, also in the, it's drive, also in the folder. The yeah. So let's do that maybe next time, too. And maybe by then I'll have a draft credit card policy. I hope it's not as long. Anything else? Um, just. Uh, circling back to Meg, um, the documents that she's been sending us that can't be shared and it's difficult. Uh, Katie and I had a sidebar email conversation mm -hmm. and she's going to draft up um, a generic email that we can use if somebody sends us a document and it's like that that we can send them mm -hmm. say hey would you please put this in the shareable format so that we can it's right. publish it's it. Some it's some weird thing. Cause it wouldn't, it wouldn't it's just a permissions thing. It doesn't matter what format the document's oh. in, she just doesn't give people permission to share it. 
Oh. So we have to do all these workarounds so that we could post it into our public documents folder right. or even just publish it in, in the select board folder. Well, what I did with the, this happened with the Poplar Cemetery documents too. Mm -hmm. So I just printed them off, scanned them, Put them named them, and, <laughs> and sent them to Katie. But at least the popular you documents you can print. Meg, yes. you can't even Meg print. Meg, you can't even What? Print. Right. It's like, no permissions, nothing. You can only look at it. Right, and then don't you, even touch it. Right. <laughs> she sent this me one of them. was self-destructed. She sent me one of them in she with the word, so right. I Katie think I thought said that. it was Katie's idea. Actually, she thought it would be real good if we just had something in our hip pocket yeah. and we could send to somebody and say, right. "Hey, we need to be able to share this with the public because it is going to be part of an right. open Absolutely. communication." Uh, I thought it was like a cash program or something. Yeah. 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 No, it's just the way they save it or something right mm -hmm. that's probably her default settings is, it a, is that in word or pages or what it was in word i think uh there was one in word there was some uh pdfs yeah something i didn't um, even recognize they, and so what i think what she did is she saved them in her google drive sent us the link but the default for her google drive is non-shareable right she needs to fix that i, I did have a question um about we were talking about naming roads and whatnot in the policy, um, but I couldn't help but notice a lot of new street signs in East Montpelier, mm -hmm. and it seems like they're smaller than hmm. what we've been. Really? The lettering, especially, hmm. um, and you know, and I know that you know Alfred says they have to be, you know, the letters have to be that big right. or whatever. Well, but when they order them, they order them. And supposedly, the sign company makes sure they're compliant with nine one one. Well, and I. I don't know no. what the deal is, but just take notice when you drive, you know, Center Road, Sibley Road. Hmm. Um, and these are new ones? They're all new. They're all, they've all recently been put up. They're, hmm. you know, green. They're all yeah. on single pose really? poles instead of two. And I've just, and I'm like, you know, they look nice. I mean, you could still see it, right. you know, but it's not like, you know, the letters are this big, right. you know. And so just take notice. Well, when, maybe we got to find out if they, they meet. Yeah, yeah, they're meeting their nine one one standards. Too, right? But I mean, I can't imagine Cars that they would public. invest in infrastructure that wasn't compliant. Hope, right. We would hope. That. You know. Right. So I don't know. It just looks well, like. Well, if I remember, I'll ask Bruce. Yeah, it just looks like ours are like so big, they and are big. you know, yeah, and Another just yeah, yeah, just look. But I gotta just say, look. at night they are helpful. Yeah. Yeah. The big. The, they're they're big. So, all right, minutes. You reminded me. Oh. Um, all right, when we did that little highway thing that we went up to um, Apple Hill, we did the erosion repair job. And oh yeah. The, I didn't go the on the road. Thing. The road commissioner from Woodbury was there, Greg Parkers, mm -hmm. as was Guthrie from East Montpelier, mm -hmm. and we were all sitting together on a little school bus. After we got past the school bus jokes, <laughs> reminiscing about what we used to do to the school bus drivers, um, oh, I asked Guthrie about that spiffy John Deere tractor with the sidearm mower that was sitting in their door yard. And I think I asked Greg, too, because they had one similar. I can't remember what Greg told me, but uh, I think his might have been leased or someone parked it there, a guy whose contractor parked it there. Mm -hmm. there. But East Montpelier did, did buy one. They did. Oh, but he bought brand top, new? top, top of the line, brandy new, top. You know, this is like, Guthrie. Yeah. You bought a John Deere, like, 100 horse M series, which is. I'm hoping we can get out a tractor. And used one. And then he bought a brand new, crazy expensive sidearm mower. But um, Greg Parker said they were looking at a <coughs> mower that would go in front of their um, front end loader somehow. I don't know how that would work. But uh, but anyway, so, so towns are not, we're, we're not unique in having the conversation of. Doing our own mowing and really? having our own equipment, Good. so I, I think it's worth worthy of exploration. And well, Alfred and I don't Katie think it's, both it's we should be spending what East Montpelier spent. By the way. No, no, they spent over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, because I had that issue on Old West Church Road, and I, I got to follow circle back in with the Killerins and Peter Harvey. Peter Harvey, he he tried. He put up signs and he went and visited most of the neighbors, but he hadn't caught up with the killer and mm -hmm. they had the issue about burdocks and I s told Peter you know he needed to follow through and and talking with the killer about their issue so if we're not going to do some mowing on roadsides next time 
somebody asks us to, to not mow on their road, we need, as a board, to say then we need to reach out to the other residents of that road and let them know what's going on because the Killerans were not happy that stuff wasn't mowed, although they were did explain about the invasives and the, and the logic behind it, which they got. They still weren't happy because they had a whole bunch of burdocks and did I it get mowed right. subsequent to that? I don't know. That's what I got to follow up on because Peter was supposed to follow up and talk with them because I. Right. I, I not to interrupt, but I, I, I just, I really want to look. I, I got to make a mental note. In fact, when I go home, if I don't fall asleep, I'm going to look into it. There used to be a law, and I keep bringing this up every time we come up. We don't have to come up. There was a law where property owners were responsible for their own road frontages, mm -hmm. and the town could assess them. And I don't know if the law changed since 19, the 19, early 1970s and prior, or if towns have just gotten weak need and taken it upon themselves, and that's become the new protocol. I'd like to find that out today. because if, if it's the former is the case and that law is still in place, we have no, then we would have no obligation and it's a courtesy. Um, right, but if you're doing it for some way, and right, not others. Right. right, I mean, you got to look at but it. We have, we have a, ra a rationale. True. We have a rationale. True. It's only temporary and we are exploring other options as we are. Right, so if now, Peter so. hasn't followed up, then I'm going to apologize and say we're going to try to do a better our job of outreach next year if, yeah. if this continues and we're hoping to buy our own equipment. I did tell them that, that we're looking at buying our own equipment so that yeah. we can do mowing more often to avoid mowing when the invasives are out. Right now we right. increased it to two as opposed to one. So, you know, I think people should be glad that we're looking at wanting to mow more often to decrease the amount of spread of invasives that we can. Well, I think all told, I think we did the right thing for the interim. Mm -hmm. It's an interim plan until we can figure out a long-term solution. Yeah. And we're working on that. And I mean, I think, yeah, I think we did, yeah. you know, did the right thing. We make so many decisions here every day, we're gonna make somebody mad sometime. Oh yeah. You know? no, and she was very nice. She yeah. thanked me for all the work I do for the town. Oh, and, yeah. oh okay, and Steve, I didn't understand. And Steve is a board, is a trustee. Yeah, they're usually really nice. I was yeah, surprised. Yeah, no, I you. just don't know where Care. their, I still don't know where their house is on Old West Church Road, but anyways. It's right past our um, appraiser's house. Ed's. So, anyways, it doesn't matter. I'll get back. I know to where Peter on. lives. Yeah, I know where Peter lives. All right, minutes. Just north, just north of Peter. Two houses. Okay. On what? Same side. Same side. Okay. Minutes of nine ten. Sharon and I both made some changes. I don't know oh. how you know which is the most current version, or when you open up a version, is it going to include the notes I made and the notes Sharon made? How do you know? I just have to look at them. It's what I've discovered. I opened it up and it showed both. It had little bubbles showing what you had edited and what she had edited. Right, but how, do you, how did you know which one to open? There's like three versions of it. Right. In the Maybe the one that's the time. time. But it doesn't give me the time. <coughs> yeah, it just gives the you the time <laughs> you last opened it. Oh, it doesn't even, oh, okay. It's not even an edit. And, and typically, it's only the same date. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you that time. Right. And Rose, did you have any edits? I um I didn't have any edits. I looked at it. The only comment that I wanted to have, I wanted to make a uh, point, and this is no um nothing against Katie or anything, but just the whole length of the minutes and the level of detail, especially under the App Forty Six update. Mm -hmm. um, when she puts so much detail in like that, and especially if this might become part of a legal lawsuit or whatever, if we decide to sue the state of Vermont, and if every single one of these facts aren't correct, um, I just worry about That's that. And, and I saw her typing a lot, you That's know, when, when they were given that F46 update. Um, and you know, but I, I mean, I, I think that she just likes to provide that level of detail, but I, I don't love think the it's level of detail. But we do yeah. have video backup. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not going to. So, back. yeah, that's the only thing. I mean, she, yeah. she wrote a I mean, lot there about is a this lot of detail. Forty six. She probably could cut it down. <laughs> I really appreciate when I when I go back and look at those minutes, or I want to 
research something that we decided because I can't take notes the whole time right. that we're having a meeting. Well, so the, it's really helpful. For yeah, me. the thing was, the level of detail was one thing, but we know that this might we might end up uh -huh. in a lawsuit with the state, and you know, I mean, nothing was said. No, no, that, good good point, know. but it's also on video. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah. other than that, I didn't find any corrections or anything. Or yeah, Sharon and I made a few. <laughs> And this I looked is at how you can tell. I looked at Sharon's and they Oh, yeah, right see, there's the bubble. This is how you can tell as you look at the owner. And once you've edited it and you saved it, it puts it under your name, and uh, that's how we know. But how do we know when I did it compared to when six, Sharon did it? PM. Well, once you start making your edits, this shows you who did what when. Okay. I just find it confusing. Oh, it is confusing. And then I made some edits. Are they there too? Let's see. This is Sharon's. Oh, yes. Oh, there's yours. Okay. Yeah. I have three yesterday. What does it say? Yeah, Denise has a green stripe under her face. Mm -hmm. Sharon has a red, red stripe. One. Oh, okay. What color I'll be assigned? Black. <laughs> it's like the seat. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if others looked at these minutes and agree with the edits that Sharon and I recommended. So the fast trash is still in play. It's, it's that's going to be on their. That's going to be on their agenda Wednesday night after they're all burnt out from talking oh, about Act Forty Six. Oh, good. We should definitely be there to. Right. Well, oh, you know good. That. Okay. So, in the meanwhile, is it still over yeah, yeah. on my The whole thing's at 32. Jesus. And sometimes okay. they feed people, but I don't know if they intend to feed audience people. Well, I'm going there and eat. In my tax dollars. I haven't seen any of this Say what? I hadn't had a chance to see any of this. Do you want to wait till next time? Or are you okay? Um, we can work Her edits are usually fine if everyone else is okay with it. I usually I always review her chance. edits because sometimes. I was not here. Did you yeah. have a chance to review? I did. They're fine. Then I'm okay with that. Yep. All right. So I would make a motion that we approve the minutes of September 10th with the edits as entered by Sharon and Denise. Sounds good. Second. Second. Third. Second. All, no. those in all those in charge? All those in favor? Please say aye. 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 So we're adjourned, right? Yes, I did. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.